Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Once I'm done with this case, we can watch the live action movie. You have a heavy investment. Thank you, Emo. But now the perfect opportunity has presented itself. At last, I shall have my revenge. What? Merry Christmas. Well, fucking hell then. Oh, double fucking hell then. Hey, hey, Nick. Do you know if there are any good waterfalls around here? Waterfalls? Do I dare ask why? Duh, Nick, isn't it obvious? I need a waterfall to stand under. Preferably a freezing one. Why? Oh, is that part of your spirit medium training? Of course, except I've been slacking off lately. I need to brave the elements and be forged anew under the rushing spring waters. Um, okay. I don't know about any falls per se, but Gord Lake is pretty close. Oh, darn. Sorry, but them's the breaks. Couldn't you just take a cold shower or something? Good idea! So much for rushing spring waters. Next in the news. A large, unidentified animal was sighted at Gord Lake. The town is buzzing with excitement. Locals are calling it Gordy in a tip of the hat to Nessie, the Loch Ness monster. Though its namesake Nessie proved to be a hoax... Locals are confident their Gordy is the real deal. Boring. You were literally going to be like, honey, take an ice bath. I mean, we could just yeet her into the lake. Can't they show real news for a change? Nick? What? The water pressure's kind of low in that shower. You want more pressure, huh? Why don't you go down to the fire department and have them spray you with the hose? Hmm. Good idea, Nick! Oh my god. Apparently, Fey Blood is no aid in detecting sarcasm. Velvet, no. Uh, what? What did I say? Yeeting her into the lake? It's fine! She can swim! Or it's a body. I mean, it's all... I mean... It's a thing. How's that? We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. Strange occurrences continue at Gord Lake, but this time it's murder. We will not be yeeting anyone into any lakes. I mean, we could though. Gord Lake again? The body of a man was found in the lake early this morning. A suspect was apprehended. Sources inside the police department revealed that the suspect's name is Miles Edgeworth, age 24. But we shouldn't. <laughs> dun dun dun. I mean, yeah. Edgeworth was an up-and-coming prosecutor known for his skill and connections. He was guaranteed a long and rewarding career. Has he thrown it all away? What? Edgeworth? What's going on? Edgeworth would never do something like... Nick? Yikes! Maya! The fireman yelled at me when I called him. We've got bigger things to worry about than that. They're arrest they've arrested Edgeworth. What? You mean the prosecutor? Yeah, he's a suspect. In a murder. What? When? Where? Who? Why? How? I am completely peeking out my mic, and I am so sorry. Edgeworth is 24 man being looking 45 on his third divorce with seven kids. Silver hair is a style choice. Just ask anyone who grew up in the 90s. I... I... I hate that you're not wrong. <laughs> I don't know! Let's go find out, Nick! 
All right, Edgeworth, talk to me. I'm going to regret doing this. You know, Nick, we've all been in here one time or another, haven't we? I guess it comes with the territory. I'm not sure it's something we should mention to too many people, though. I mean, facts? Hi, Edgeworth. Ah! He looks so grouchy. Merry Xmas, by the way. I, I mean, yeah, apparently. Hey, Edgeworth, come back! Oh, he just tried to leave. <laughs> he just tried to leave. What are you doing here? Nick, I don't think he's in a very good mood. No shit, Maya! Well, he is in detention. Were you in a good mood where you were here? So you've come to laugh at the fallen attorney? Then laugh. Laugh! Well, why aren't you laughing? Nick, should we be laughing? Nah, it's a trick. Laugh and he'll get mad. Or burst into tears. That's too funny for more than one reason. You mean if you were arrested on suspicion of murder, you'd be grumpy too? I mean, that's fair. That's, that's valid. Edgeworth, we don't have so much free time we can spend it coming down here to laugh at you. Yes, you do. Actually, he's right. <laughs> I hoped you wouldn't come. I didn't want you to see me. Not like this. I didn't want to see you like this either. Believe me. He's right? Who's right? Edgeworth, tell me what happened. Why should I? What are you going to do about it? Duh! We're going to help you, that's what. Help me? You? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry? You're a novice. You've only been in three trials. Hey, I won all three trials. Sure, you got lucky and won all three, but your luck's bound to run out someday. You need real skill, right? Experience. Well, I mean, I don't get experience unless you let me go to court. So. Nick, he's insulting you. Nick, why am I always the one that has to get angry? The murder took place at Gord Lake, correct? Yes, late last night. The lake is a long way away from your offices and the courthouse. Yes, yes it is. Why were you down there? I see no need to tell you. Mr. Edgeworth, you, you didn't really... <laughs> Gordy. Huh? I went to see Gordy. Yeah, and I'll believe that in the turn of the century of never. Gordy, what's that? I'll tell you later. Why won't Edgeworth talk to us? You don't this is where it happened? Yeah, Gord Lake is in the middle of this park. I can see some police walking around in there. Questioning people, probably. Hey, isn't that Detective Gumshoe over there? Well, pal, there's enough of us here. Anyone found anything? Sorry, sir. Nothing. Idiot! The trial's tomorrow! We need clues! On the double! B but sir, there weren't any clues. That's why we arrested that attorney, Mr. Edgeworth. It's clear, sir. He's the one who... Shut up! Just you try saying that again. I'll... I'll... I'll make you sorry if you do. So just... Just get out of my face, pal. Yes, sir. Poor Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe's kind of scary today. Recruits. Bleh. Ah! Eek! Hey, you're the hairy guy. Hairy butts. Right. Phoenix Wright. Will he ever learn my name? No. No, he will not. No, it's okay. 
If you say so, lovely. And just, what are you doing here, pal? Investigating? Uh, well, yes, I suppose. Well, I'm here to help. Ask me anything you want. Bring it! He seems different than usual. I wonder what's up. Um, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't actually asked, asked us to defend him yet? Huh? Oh, y you don't say. Detective Gumshoe, do you know what happened here? Huh? You don't know, pal? Nope. Wow, okay, Mr. Head in the fluffy pink clouds, lawyer. Wait, really? Is that necessary? Head in the... huh? Never mind, I'll tell you. It happened last night, about 15 minutes after midnight. There was a boat out on Gord Lake. In that boat were two men. One of those men shot the other with a pistol. And the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, that's Maya. And the shooter was Mr. Edgeworth? A cop who arrived on the scene arrested him. How did they get there so fast? Well, there was a witness. When the report came in, we raced to the lake. A witness? Why fluffy and pink? Why not rainbow? I don't know. Ask Gumshoe. I, I can't pretend to understand what goes through Gumshoe's mind. You don't think Mr. Edgeworth is a murderer, do you? Absolutely not. It's impossible. I don't care if there's a witness, either. I don't believe a lick of it. Right. Who cares what the witness says? I care. Uh, you really believe in him, don't you, detective? Of course I do. But the police are pretty sure he's the killer. Nobody's even really taking this investigation that seriously. Oh no! After all the help Mr. Edgeworth has been to us, hard to imagine that no one's standing up to take his side. Well, at least you are, detective. At least you are. Do you know who will be Mr. Edgeworth's defense attorney in tomorrow's trial? He hasn't got one yet. What? The trial is tomorrow, isn't it? Well, I don't know the whole story, but apparently no one he's been talking to will take his case. Why not? Mr. Edgeworth won't tell me. When you guys showed up, I figured he'd ask you to defend him. Unfortunately not. Well, pal, then you got a job to do. Help out Mr. Edgeworth. Prove that badge you wear isn't just some fancy piece of metal. Prove it to me, pal. Show me you're an attorney. Brother's gonna end up defending himself. Just watch. Oh no, it's worse than that. There's a reason no one will take his case. And by the way, it's a shitty reason. Who was this witness? Er, sorry, pal. That's confidential. Anyway, the witness saw everything, apparently. I'm sure they'll turn up at the trial tomorrow. Was there only that one witness? Yep. It was pretty cold out on the lake last night. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I know why he's not at, or why people won't take his case. And, um, it's a dick reason. And it was Christmas Eve, after all. Still, we're being thorough. You never know when you're going to turn up another witness. That's why we're here today, checking things out. Stay tuned. Yeah, absolutely. So far, we're coming up empty. Oh, it's Christmas today. I'd forgotten. What are you getting me for Christmas, Nick? Talk to Santa. Uh, okay, so we need to move. Ah, okay. So we can't go in until we get... Until we get... Edgeworth, cooperate. Alright, Edgeworth, I need you to talk to me. Your attorney's badge? Edgeworth, let me defend you. Ha! <laughs> Good one, right? But I'm not that hard up. 
Not yet. What do you mean by that? Me? Trust a wet behind the ears lawyer with only three trials under his belt? Never. What? My case is near hopeless, right? Every defense attorney I've talked to has turned me down. What? Simply put, they were afraid they'd lose. It occurred to me that my, that it might be my fault they lack confidence. After all, I did get every single one of their clients declared guilty. I don't believe it. Regardless, I don't want you involved in this. You in particular, I cannot ask to do this. Well, you may not have much choice in the matter. When isn't Edgeworth not doing that? I mean, it, that's true. You're right. Edgeworth never wants to talk straight to me because it 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 it, it would break his little brain if he did. Edgeworth, this is really hard for me to ask. But you didn't do it, right? Right? Stop being bit stop being a bitch and let me defend you, duckhead dickhead. Duckhead. <laughs> oh no, I have I have summoned I have summoned I've summoned the, the horror. <laughs> Think what you will. I have only one request. Huh? Stay out of this case. Why? But Nick is trying to help you. Duckhead. Yeah. <coughs> and yeah, I know. I brought it upon myself. I did. I'm getting tired. So I just, yeah. Almost a thousand swears. Almost. I know. I know that, but I don't want your help, okay? Why not? Look, just go away and leave me alone. Nick! Mr. Edgeworth did it, didn't he? Maya! Let's go investigate elsewhere. But Nick! Alright, Butthead is going to be an absolute asshole. Is it true? No one will take Mr. Edgeworth's case? Yeah. He's a bit of a celebrity. If you defended him and lost, your reputation would be sure to suffer. What's more, the case against him is... Well, it's pretty solid. I suppose it would be if they have a witness. Hey, pal! Don't tell me you're going to turn your back on him, too. Remember the Steel Samurai case? Mr. Edgeworth helped you get your client declared innocent. I... I know that. I went to Edgeworth. I tried. He really doesn't want us to represent him. Especially not us, he said. What?! Well, well that doesn't make any sense, pal. You should have heard him talking about you after that trial. He kept saying, right, 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 over and over. Nick? I'm not sure that's a good sign. Neither am I. Why wouldn't he want your help? I don't get it. Detective Gumshoe, sir! What? Find something? Um, no sir, not yet. But there was a call from the precinct. They wanted to hold an investigation briefing. A briefing? Right, I'm off. Oh, sorry pal, I guess you heard. I gotta go. Any last things you want to ask me about before I head back? Math, m no, blitzball math does not make sense. None of it makes sense. The math does not math. There's a reason you came back from hiatus for your velvet, and it is very much appreciated that you came back from hiatus. Well, yes, do you have any information on the victim? Sorry, they haven't worked up the autopsy report yet. I'm still waiting for it myself. Actually, Say, if you get the time, drop by the precinct. We can talk more there, pal. You're not coming back, detective? Um, probably not, pal. So what should we do if we have something to talk to you about? Ah, right. Uh, here, I'll show you how to get to the precinct. Come down and see me anytime. Oh, hey, Detective Gunshoe! What? 
Um, we'd like to take a look around in the park. Can we walk around? Yeah, no problem, pal. You got my permission. You know, Nick, I think there's something to be said for talking to people when they're busy. Yeah, they don't have time to think about not giving you information. Right, let's get investigating. And Alties, or not Alties, um, Husky's birds are back. Wowzers, this is Gord Lake. Yep. I'm not sure it warrants a Wowzers, though. Hmm, probably not. But hey, look at that snack stand. Samurai dogs. I want a samurai dog, please. I bet they're great. With a name like Samurai Dog, how could they not be? They're a little behind the times, though. The kids are all into the Pink Princess now. I mean, like, you know? Nope. Burb. Huh. Someone left some poppers here. You know, you pull the string and it goes pop. Yeah, I know the ones. You see them a lot around New Year's. Hey, Nick. They might be a clue. Let's take them. Come on. Admit it. You just want to pop them, right? Was it that obvious? Poppers. Hmm. Hats. Party hats. Apparently not. I suppose it couldn't hurt. Huh? Where'd they go? Into my pocket! Not very clue-worthy. I will decide what counts as a clue. I like it here, Nick. Look! Someone's camping! They've got guts camping at the scene of a murder. Hey! Hey, Nick! If they were camping here last night, they might know something about the murder. That's true. Gets flashbacks to... Oh, no. <laughs> oh, the party hose. <laughs> oh. Good call, Maya. Let's go talk to them. This SUV has seen better days. It's dented all over. I can't believe anyone would drive their car down here. Hey, Nick! What? Don't tell me you're hungry again. No, no! I was just wondering, why are camping pots and pans made out of aluminum? They didn't talk about that in any of the law books. So there's no law saying they have to be made out of aluminum then. I'm not having this conversation with you. Thank you for the posture check, Gimo. Ugh. There's food and some magazines on the sheet. It takes a pretty tough skin to camp out in this cold. This camera has a mic and some sort of attachment. It must take pictures when triggered by a noise. Wow, cool! Let's try it out! <laughs> Hi, I'm Nick! Maybe I'm not saying it loud enough? Hey, I'm Nick! Huh. Nick! Will you stop that? Maybe it's broken. Don't kick it! Maybe it isn't set to respond to voices. Well, what then? These things? The party poppers? Apparently, yes. No, just lost the blankets. I mean, you know, that is also true. I don't like camping, so I wouldn't know. And I also really don't like cold. So those two things together would make me absolutely miserable. Well, um, it responded. Yeah! Hey, you, get your hands off of that. Oh, God. This is the one that I get to go into draw for, isn't it? Enjoy Lotta! Yeehaw! Fuck me! 
Yeehaw all the way. God damn it. I hope you hope I'm ready. I, I am not prepared. I am absolutely not prepared. What in the Sam Hill? Look what she's done now! There goes a whole roll of film! Uh, what? Huh? Um, sorry? Sorry it's nice, but it don't pay my bills! Y'all know how much a roll of that film costs? I I'll pay you back. What were y'all thinking setting off a party popper in a place like this? Um, well... What?! Don't try to play stupid with me just because you think I'm some country bumpkin! Oh my god. Yeah, I know how, how y'all Yanks think. I say those southern folks talk with that exaggerated draw why they must be dumb. Well, let me tell you, just because I might be dumb don't mean we all are. Nick, help me. And who are you now? Her chaperone? Yeah, um, no, rather, um, we're sort of friends. Just figure out what y'all are going to say and say it, say it for bejesum's sake. God, she's like your aunt. Yeah, no. Um, I think I think any any southern person with their salt has a has a relative like this. The southern person with ginger hair. Oh, the stereotype is stereotyping. Honestly, I think that's supposed to be more brown. But yes, the stereotype is hard, hitting hard today. And so is my depths of my accent. God, I'd rather sit through one of Papa's drawls than listen to you stutter all day. And bejesums, thank you. <laughs> are, are we kidnapping Husky's Aunt Matilda for this? Oh boy. I guess we should pay her for the film. You don't even have a southern aunt? You don't think so at least? Well, that's fine. You can have one of mine. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps we're kidnapping great aunt Matilda? Watch it! Yes, ma'am. On second thought, I'll pay her later. I'm really sorry. You think you're good? All right, all right, all right. I'll I'll hang on to my 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 aunts. It's fine. We have a great aunt bejesums. Oh my god, is this lore now? <laughs> um, what? Can't you see I'm changing the film on my camera here? Someone I'm not naming any names, but someone used up a whole roll. Sorry. That didn't work. It's lore now. Oh my god. I wonder if I have anything to show her that would get her attention. I, I have a badge. I, um, this is my badge. There are a lot of badges like it, but this one's mine. Huh? Aren't badges all supposed to be all shiny and impressive? You a cop or something? Um, I'm a lawyer. Wh what Y'all ain't gonna try and pull one of them lawsuits on me over that film now. Cause I'll have y'all know I'm a fighter and I wrestled meaner looking things than you. No, no, that's not it at all. We're here investigating a murder that took place here on the lake. A murder? Sounds cool. Why didn't y'all say that in the first place? Go ahead, ask me anything you like. Finally, some cooperation. You too. Y'all can come out of hiding now. I won't bite hard. Come to think of it, where did Maya get to? Sorry. I was feeling a little overwhelmed. The culture gap and all. Never you mind, honey. I can talk to Yank for I can talk Yank for you if <clears throat> if it pleases you. Thank you. I think I'll be okay. 
Great then. I'm Lotta. Lotta Hart. But y'all can call me Lotta. I'm here for, ta for photographing meteor showers for a research project. Mighty pleased to meet you. The badge thing took you forever to get. I mean, it tells you you gotta give her something. It's literally the only thing I had. Oh yeah, when was that murder anyway? I ain't seen much television lately. It happened late in the night on Christmas Eve. That's so? Christmas Eve? A man on a boat was shot. Did you see anything? Well, let me see. A boat, you say? I reckon I might have seen one. Not sure, though. Y'all gotta remember, I've been watching this here lake for a good three days now. I've seen enough boats to choke a mule. Kinda hard to remember which I've seen when. So, what is it you do, Lotta? You whip around the badge in so much in this case. I, I'm realizing that. I've already used it twice. Huh? Me? Ha <laughs> ha, y'all don't really want to know that, do ya? Actually, I'm a research student at Country U, right in the heart of the heartland. Wow, neat! Nick, she's a research student at a university! Country you! Um, uh, so I hear. So when did you come up here? Mm, let me see. I guess it was about three days ago. What are you for What? I keep wanting to use photographing, but I know that's the wrong word. Photographing. Didn't I tell you all that already? Meteors! Yep, meteor showers! Falling stars? That's quite a camera you have there. Y'all better know it. It's German made. A genuine Slangen. Solingen? Solingen? Does anyone know how to pronounce this word? No. Isn't that where they make knives? Um, so what's the device you have stuck to the camera? Huh? Device? Your camera went off all by itself when I fired my potty po party popper. Oh, that? That mic triggers the shutter whenever it detects certain sounds. It's programmed to pick up loud noises right now. A programmable camera? Neat! Alright, boat rentals. Nick, what is this place? A boat rental shop. Closed for Christmas, it seems. I guess a murder taking place in one of the boats won't be good for business, either. Boats? I've never ridden on a boat. Really? Well, how about we go on one when the trial is finished? Hey, good idea! You bet! Small boat rental shop. Doesn't look like anyone is around. They're probably closed because it's Christmas. There's more forest off that way. I doubt I'd find any helpful clues in there. There are some boats floating at the dock. Was one of these boats used in the murder, I wonder? Nick? Huh? I changed my mind. I don't really want to go for a boat ride. Uh, you guys have been running me ragged. Looks like Detective Gumshoe is in here. Something wrong, miss? Hmm? Turning yourself in. Okay, what did you do? Shoplifting, larceny, public indecency? N no, none of those things. We're looking for Detective Gumshoe. Is he around? Gumshoe? Oh, yeah, he's in a meeting right now. I don't think he'll be out anytime soon. Okay, we'll come back. You do that. Oh, and go straight home and stay out of trouble. No more shoplifting. You got that? Uh, do I look like a criminal or something? Alright, so we're not supposed to be here yet. Lotta? Yeah? So your camera, it triggers on loud explosion noises? I uh, yup! Actually, the victim in the case we were researching, he was shot with a pistol. A pistol? Right. Now, wouldn't a gunshot make a similar noise to our party popper? I guess it would. Your camera, didn't get a picture of the murder, did it? Hey! 
Y'all are pretty brat. Huh? I see what you're saying. Tell you what, I'll have a look-see at my film. It would have been a photo taken late last night. I checked them once. Don't remember if there was anything on them, though. But what if I got something? I could be witness to a genuine murder. Yeehaw! I'll go check that film. Y'all come back now, you hear? She went inside her SUV. I guess we should come back later? Okay, that, okay, that's what I missed. I needed to trigger something. Normal affairs now? I guess Detective Gumshoe is still on that meeting. Hey! Thanks for coming down, pal! Detective Gumshoe! We just finished the meeting. For better or worse. I get the feeling we're in for some bad news. Do you know anything about the victim yet? No, no, still can't ID him. Has Mr. Edgeworth said anything? Not a word. So how did the meeting go? I can't tell you, pal. You're a lawyer. True. You know, I don't know what to believe anymore. Sure, Mr. Edgeworth's human, like you or me. Still, I get the feeling that if he'd done something wrong, he wouldn't go hide in it. That's just the kind of guy he is. Why can't anyone else see that? So they think Mr. Edgeworth did it. Well, the trial's starting tomorrow, as scheduled. I see. Um, hey, in the end, you did tell us about the meeting. Uh, don't go telling anyone else, pal. Yes, sir. And do me a favor. Stand by Mr. Edgeworth. He needs help, and you're the ones to help him. I'm sure he's got some reason why he won't talk to us. Thanks, Detective Gumshoe. Detective Gumshoe, how come you trust Mr. Edgeworth so much? Well, I think that was obvious. We got a strong working relationship, us two. We trust each other, and that's how it works. A uh, working relationship? See, Mr. Edgeworth always gets his defendants declared guilty, every time. Yeah, his methods might be a little extreme at times, but there's a reason. He trusts our investigation, see? He trusts us to get the right man. That's why I work extra hard, pal. We've got to earn that trust he places in us. I see. Mr. Edgeworth is a man you can trust, and you have my word on that. I was wondering, did you ever get that autopsy report? Oh, that? Yeah, I made a copy for you. Thank you. Nick? Huh. Can you show me that photo of the victim? Oh, that face. Someone you know? I... I don't know. I just have this feeling that I've met him somewhere a long time ago. Hey, y'all! Lada! Wait up a sec, we got bingo! Bingo? My automatic camera took two pictures last night. Hey! This is them, take a look. Wait, see? See, he's shooting him with that pistol! It, it looks like that, yes. But you can't really tell who that is shooting. Yeah, well, there was enough fog out there last night to strangle a bullfrog. But, you know, seeing these photos reminded me of something. What? I saw the murder happen. I'm a witness. What? Uh, are you serious? Of course. How do you forget? Never mind. Y'all reckon I should tell the cops? Uh, I reckon so. What's that? Now, don't y'all go trying to mock my accent. I'm a sensitive lady. Hey, so I'm off to talk to the cops. Y'all can have this photo. Later. Wait, you said there were two. Wait, Lotta. What? Can y'all see I'm kind of busy? Tell us what you saw too, please. Nice try, honey, but I wasn't born yesterday. I'm a witness, and that means I'm on the side of justice. And that means the cops. 
I'd sooner eat the south side of a northbound skunk than tell you. Lotta! Don't let it get your skivvies in a bunch. Friends today, enemies tomorrow. Or was that the other way around? No matter. I'm gone. Hey, maybe they'll let me do some testifying. How darn! Oh my god. Girl, you can badmouth a bloody bear. I can badmouth a lot of things if I tried hard enough. Oh my god. I can't get out of it. Okay, hang on. <laughs> she left. Well, that's one more witness. What do we do now, Nick? Well, if she saw something, there's not much we can do about it. The question is, what exactly did she see? I guess we'll find out in the trial tomorrow. And we do have a slight other problem. Looks like the police have given up their interviewing. Hey! Ah! Nick! I think Santa's mad at you! Long time no see, Nick. Nick? You know Santa? Wow, Nick and St. Nick! Hey, I see the connection! Don't be ridiculous. Dude, it's me! Larry! What are you doing here? Isn't it obvious? I'm working my day job! I sell samurai dogs! What one? Gotta get money for dates, you know. My girl Keyonce deserves the best. Keyonce? Not another model, I hope. Oh, Keyonce is a fine, fine woman, Nick. It was her idea that I wear this costume. She was all, you go, girlfriend, you know? She bought this costume for me. That? That's great, Larry. Wow, a Santa costume. She must be really nice. Whoa, cute. Nick, who's she? She's not your, not my what? No, no, she's not. I'm his partner, my F.A. I'm a, I'm the little sister sister. Wow, Nick must be tough. Working nine to five, having to take care of a little sister. N no, I'm not Nick's sister. I'm my older sister's little sister. Huh? Sounds great. Don't worry, Maya. He's not listening. You can't with her. She isn't the brightest light. I mean... The only real smart one died at the beginning of the game. And we're sad about it. Hey, Larry? There was a murder here last night. And since you work here, have you heard anything? Nick, you're wasting your time. Last night was Christmas Eve. He was with Keonse, obviously. He wouldn't have been standing out here in the cold. Oof. Huh? I think what you just said caught him off guard, Maya. N no, it's just Keyonce's not in town right now. She She's in Hawaii on a photo shoot. A model. I knew it. How, how does this guy get models is my question. Well, anyway, there was a murder here on the lake. The trial's tomorrow. Huh. Neat. The defendant is Edgeworth. Miles Edgeworth? Um, Nick? Why would Larry know Edgeworth? Whoa, Nick? You don't mean that Miles Edgeworth. Old Edgy? Yeah, he's a murder suspect. Whoa, murder? Huh? You know Mr. Edgeworth, Larry? Yeah, of course! Edgy was in the same class as us in grade school! What?! Um, um, tell me about the dogs. Huh? Oh, you mean the samurai dogs? Why are they samurai dogs? I mean, they kind of look gourd shaped. Oh, well, originally they were gourd dogs, you know, like guard dogs. Ouch. Yeah, the samurai thing was Keonce's idea. Oh, she's my woman, you know. She was all, change the name and you go, girlfriend. She made me that banner. Man, the kids can't get enough of those samurai dogs. 
Um, something about that just seems wrong. Oh, and guess what? We're getting a ton of customers here at the lake. What with the big news? The big news? To be honest, you're not trying to be mean. He isn't too good looking. That's my point. I want to know how he gets models. Yeah, Gordy. G Gordy? I'm just piling on more things to talk about. So, Mr. Edgeworth was your classmate, Larry? Yeah, Nick, him, and I used to hang out all the time. Wow, I never knew. Don't get me wrong, he's always been kind of a stick in the mud. Studying all the time, trying to be like father. Like his father? Yeah, Edgy's pop was a famous defense lawyer back in the day. Wow, wait, you said defense lawyer? Yeah. Wait a second. But Mr. Edgeworth is a prosecuting attorney. What? Edgy's got a proboscis on his knee? Oh my god. No, no, he's a prosecuting attorney. That's like the total opposite of a defense lawyer. Huh? Go figure. He always used to talk about defending the weak who were unable to defend themselves. Man, he used to go on and on about man's duty to society and all that. What a bore. I wonder what changed his mind, though. Do you know, Nick? Nick? Butts in a nicer way. He's a nerd. Oh, yeah, he's absolutely a nerd. What's Gordy? Huh? You mean you don't know? It's here, in this very lake. A giant, mysterious monster. Gordy. A uh, monster? Yeah. Check it out. This is an article from yesterday's newspaper. There's a photo. Wow, it's really real! Nick, a monster! A real monster! Um, yeah, it's probably just a log or something, right? Hey, there's a quote here from, a, from the person who took the photo. Hmm, what's this? I set the camera to automatic, and when we got into the frame... I heard a loud bang, like an explosion, followed by the sound of something slipping into the water. I wish I could have seen it! Why would there be a sound like an explosion? Larry, could I borrow this article from you? Sure, no problem! That'll be one million dollars! One million... Grow up, Larry. What is it? Oh, nothing. Just something's been bothering me. Could you show me that autopsy report again? Huh. Hey, I... I remember now. This guy. He's a lawyer that was at the office that Mia worked at. I met him once when I went there to hang out with Sis. That office? Wait. You mean Grossberg's office? Right! That guy! That was the last name I expected to come up. Maybe I should go talk to him for old time's sake. That painting is still obviously missing. Ahem. Oh, that old familiar clearing of the throat. Aha, you're Mia's something, are you not? I was her understudy, yes. Phoenix, right? Aha, and you're Mia's something too, are you not? Her little sister, yes. You've grown. You've come to look a lot like your sister, you know. It takes me back. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of fresh lemon, you see. Um, Mr. Grossberg, sir? Hmm? 
Ah, yes, I beg your pardon. Of course you came here to discuss something. What is it then? Something the matter? There was a murder last night. A murder? You haven't heard? I um, just got up, you see. Well, Miles Edgeworth shot someone with a pistol. Edgeworth? What? Who did he shoot? Well, the identity of the victim is still unknown. Th this is terrible news indeed. I guess he hadn't heard anything. Mr. Grossberg, whatever happened to that painting? Oh, yes. I do not think it shall ever be coming back home to this office. I can't exactly claim it is stolen. I suppose it's my just desserts. Oh, bitter desserts. So this is the moment the crime took place, eh? Yes. You can't really say for sure that that's Edward. That's Edgeworth. I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Not sure at all. Uh, my apologies. I'm not sure I can help you with that. Thanks. Alright, well, I think I've covered everything. Nope, Hammond. There it is. Who is this Hammond guy, anyway? It's a right- it, it is absolutely a rite of passage here to be threatened by Alti biting you. Mr. Hammond. He was the defense attorney in that case. That case? Yes, the DL6 incident. DL6? Why does that sound so familiar? Perhaps you remember. I'm sure someone mentioned it during the trial for Mia's murder. That was the incident where the police were so at a loss they used a spirit medium. Ah! Oh, wait, you don't mean... Was that medium my mother? Yes, my dear. The spirit medium Misty Fay, your mother, contacted the spirit of the victim. But... The case was a loss. No conviction was made. The DL6 incident, yes, happened 15 years ago. A very strange case indeed. They never caught the criminal. Or, they never caught the criminal, right? Correct. Misty Fay used her powers to talk to the spirit of the late victim. Her testimony led to charges being laid against one man. But Mr. Hammond won the case, and the suspect was declared innocent. And the police blamed my mother, calling her a fraud. You were the one who helped her out then, right, Mr. Grossberg? Uh, yes, yes, quite. Thank you. N no please don't mention it. DL6. Never thought I'd hear that name again. But wait, what does that case have anything to do with Mr. Edgeworth? It has everything to do with Mr. Edgeworth, my dear. The victim in the DL6 incident was none other than his father, Gregory Edgeworth. What? What? His father? If you want to know more, you should ask him yourself. Show him this. I'm sure he'll talk to you. Wait. This is a photograph of my mother. Alright. I think we've got it all. Edgeworth, talk to me. What's this? I was hoping you'd gotten my message the first time. Edgeworth, what about your defense? <sighs> it's no concern of yours. Guess he hasn't found anyone yet. She can try? I've threatened Lathgar more times than I can count. Yeah, I know. The fact that Lathgar goes along with it is hilarious. Hey, as long as you're hydrating, it's perfectly fine, Sylvan. Can I ask you about the murder? Right. I'll ask you again. Just leave me alone. Please try to understand. I'm not doing this to prove I'm tough or because I look down on you. I just don't want you anywhere near this case. Understand? Why did you go to Gord Lake? I have no intention of telling you. Nor, apparently, would you tell Detective Gumshoe. 
Detective Gum, she was really worried about you. Alright, if you're going to be a butt, I'm going to slap you with this. Re offers snacks as a sacrifice to not be bitten, and Re is immune because of the sacrifices. I approve. I approve of this completely. Edgeworth, it's only been a matter of hours since you last visited, yet you've made incredible progress in your investigation. I'll admit it, I'm impressed, right? You were always single-minded in your work, though. Once you start on something, you always see it through, don't you? About the DL6 incident? Right, DL6. I didn't want you to find out about it. That is why I refused your offer to defend me. I'm sorry if it sounded like I thought you weren't up to the job. I just wanted to keep you away from DL6. So, do you still think it would have been better for me to stay away? I don't know. But, I see no point in hiding anything from you now. Very well. Ask whatever you like, and I will answer it to the best of my ability. The DL6 incident was when my father died. Right before my eyes. He was shot and killed, and I saw it all. Oh! My memories from that time are foggy. I suppose it's a self-defense mechanism. In any case, a suspect was arrested. A man. It's pretty clear he was the only one who could have killed my father. The spirit medium they used to talk to my late father said the same thing. It was an attorney by the name of Robert Hammond that cleared the suspect's name. And Hammond is the victim in the Gord Lake murder? Correct. Um, that spirit medium... That was my mom. What? You mean your... It's strange. I thought that terrible incident was about to end. And now this. About to end? The DL6 incident happened 15 years ago. 15 years ago. On December 28th. December 28th? The statute of limitations on this case runs out in three days. What? Um, Nick, what does that mean? When a case's statute of limitations runs out, legally the case never happened. Three days from now, DL6 will be closed. Forever. What happened to the suspect? The one who got off innocent? I don't know. He disappeared from public view. Nobody knows where to. If he's still alive, he'd be about 50 years old now. I guess I can understand why he'd go into hiding. It'd be hard to live a normal life after being a murder suspect in such a big case. Um, so was your father a lawyer? He was. Gregory Edgeworth. He was quite famous at the time, apparently. So you were sort of trying to follow in his footsteps? <sighs> I'd rather not talk about it. Your attorney's badge. I can't say I really want to see one of those right now. Hmm. Who would have thought there'd be a photo? Edgeworth, did you shoot him? What do you think, right? I don't think you're the kind to point a gun at anyone, no. So you didn't shoot him? No, I didn't. It wasn't me. Right. Hmm? It pains me to ask you this now. I know! You want us to defend you! I wanted to hear him say it, Maya. God damn it. Yes. Will you? Of course. Ah, who could have guessed this day would come? Not me. This is my chance to finally pay you back. Pay him back? Pay me back? For what? I don't remember ever doing anything for you. Never mind, I guess you don't really need to know. Huh? My letter of request. Please give it to Detective Gumshoe. 
Well, I guess we should. Huh? What's that? Earthquake! It's a big one! <laughs> it's coming down now. Oof. That was scary. Huh? Huh? Where's Edgeworth? There! He's on the floor in a ball, shivering. I guess he doesn't do so well with earthquakes. I've heard of running, but curling up in a ball? Well, I guess we're done. Mr. Edgeworth doesn't seem like he's going to stand up anytime soon. Wow, we're just gonna leave him there! Um, right. We have to give Edgeworth's letter of request to Detective Gumshoe. What's going on here? Eee! Um, what's wrong, Detective? This wild lady comes in here just a while ago. Says she came to talk to y'all after hearing what Mr. Wright had to say. What's this all about, pal? Not a heart. Why are you going around finding more witnesses? You want to give Mr. Edgeworth a death sentence, pal? No, not at all. Just, I mean, she did see something. There's nothing I can do about that. I can't go around covering up evidence. Uh, you trying to say something about the way I do my job? No, sir. God damn it, Gumshoe. Here, take the thing and let me rest. Look what I got. Hey, you did it, pal. Glad I waited till the last minute to file those papers. I'll rip them up and start new ones for you. Thanks, detective. Well, we'll see you in court tomorrow, I guess. Good luck, pal. Hey, you guys feel that earthquake a little while back? I was worried. Worried? We're fine. I've lived down here my whole life. I'm pretty used to them by now. Oh, I wasn't worried about you two. I was worried about Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, right. He did seem to overreact a little, now that you mention it. Yeah, well, I'm not surprised. It was a pretty big quake. I'm going to go check on him. You two go eat and get your rest for tomorrow's trial. Later. I wonder what it is with Mr. Edgeworth and earthquakes. I wonder too. He was never that scared of them when he was in school. Then again, I only really got to know him in fourth grade. He transferred to another school after that. I wonder what happened to Edgeworth. Anyway, okay, on with the chaos! Alright. Karma? That's right. Manfin von Karma. He's the best prosecutor there is. He hasn't lost a case in his 40-year career. He's a god of prosecution, right? A god! Not a single case? He'll do anything to get a guilty verdict. Anything. Hmm, sounds like someone else I know, Edgeworth. Hmm. You don't understand. I mean, he'll really do anything. Manfred von Karma is a man to be feared. That's quite a claim coming from someone who forges evidence. He taught me what it really means to prosecute. What? Just picture a prosecutor as vicious as me multiplied by a factor of ten. Uh, so, so he was your teacher then, Mr. Edgeworth? Something like that. And now he's trying to get you found guilty? What a creep! Oh, wait. Maybe he's planning on losing on purpose to help you out? Ha! No. Yeah, no. Not a chance. He hasn't lost once in 40 years. 40 years. He's as ruthless as me times 20. That's pretty ruthless. Like I said, he's a god amongst prosecutors. I guess that's something like Mia was to me. Speaking of Mia, um, Maya. Uh-huh. We could really be using Mia's help right now, don't you think? Oh. Uh-huh. I can't. I'm sorry. I tried. I really tried, but I couldn't reach. You couldn't reach? I think it's because I haven't been training. 
My powers are weak again. Oh man, what bad timing. I'm really sorry. I'll try my best. I hope so. What are you whispering about? Uh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Don't, don't, don't stare at me that way, Edgeworth. It's fine. Well, it's time. Let's head in. All right. This is what we're in for today, ladies and gentlemen. And, and Val's just sitting over there drinking tea. Yep, this is, this is about right. This is not abnormal at all. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. I hate him already. Um, Mr. Von Karma, is the prosecution ready? Mm. Fool. You seriously think that I would stand here were I not completely prepared? R right, my apologies. Von Karma is going to make me crave normal. Yeah, Von Karma is going to make me wish I were dealing with Edgeworth again. <laughs> He's even got the judge scared. Very well. Your opening statement, please. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Um, uh, nothing, of course. That should be fine. The prosecution may call its first witness. What's with this guy? Is he royalty or something? How am I supposed to fight against this? I call the detective in charge of this case, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Okay, Gumshoe's first. Let's see how this goes. Describe the incident. Now. Uh, yes, sir. Detective Gumshoe looks nervous. I am not surprised. Uh, please take a look at this map. The murder happened late Christmas Eve around midnight, sir. There was one boat in the very middle of the lake, sir. There were two men on the boat. Now, there happened to be a woman camping here on the edge of the lake, sir. At 12.10 p.m., she heard two pistol shots, sir. Then the boat started to move. It went towards the boat rental shop, sir. Hmm. All right, so we have the map. That's good. Testify to the court about the arrest. Now. W wait, Mr. Von Karma. Yes. Actually, I'm the one that's supposed to be handling these proceedings. Wrong. There is only one thing you need to do here. You will slam down your gavel and say the word guilty. That is your role. Yes, of course. You're quite right. No, he's not! The arrest of Edgeworth. A man called into the station around 30 minutes after midnight, sir. We headed to the scene of the crime as fast as we could go, sir. That's where we found Mr. Edgeworth. Now, I didn't suspect him of anything at all, sir. But the next morning, a body was found in the lake. So we had to arrest Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Hmm. I see. Very well. Begin your cross-examination, attorney. Now. And the judge is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Did you find any clues on the body? A single bullet was recovered from the body, sir. He was shot through the heart fatally, sir. Judge, here's the bullet. It did not strike bone, so its shape is well preserved. Very well, the court accepts this bullet into evidence. 22 caliber, okay.
Why is that? Well, we found the murder weapon in the boat. The murder weapon? A pistol. Detective Gumshoe. That is a vital piece of information. Please revise your testimony. Right. S sorry, Your Honor. What about the pistol made it decisive evidence? Tsk, tsk, tsk. Uh, he has the same evil laugh as Edgeworth. There were fingerprints on the pistol found in the boat, sir. They were clear prints from Mr. Edgeworth's right hand, sir. What? Order! Order! So Mr. Edgeworth's fingerprints were found on the murder weapon? Y yes your honor, sir. Judge, this is the weapon in question. Accepted into evidence. Members of the court, we now have the pistol used in the murder and the bullet found in the body. Detective. Y yes sir! Was the bullet found in the body fired from this pistol? Y yes sir. The ballistic markings on the bullet match the pistol. Hmm. Hey Nick? What does he mean ballistic markings? Shocking! To imagine someone here does not know something as basic as ballistic markings. Nick, he's glaring at me. Very well, I will explain. Actually, judge, you do it. At me? Okay, I know. The judge also, I've been giving kind of a deep voice, but at the same time, Von Karma is taking a lot of effort. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ahem. Ballistic markings are like the fingerprints on a gun. The barrel leaves distinctive marks on each bullet it fires. You can examine these ballistic fingerprints to see which gun fired the shot. It's quite accurate. Indeed. This leads to one inevitable conclusion. The bullet found in the victim's heart was without a doubt fired from this pistol. This pistol, which you as, may, as you may recall, was covered with the defendant's own fingerprints. Order! Order! This is bad. This makes it look like Edgeworth did it. Well, Judge. I'd say it's almost decisive, yes. Honestly, I could declare a verdict at this point. However, I will break you. You wish to hear the witness speak, no doubt. Very well. I am somewhat fatigued, so I will take a brief break. I will call my witness after the recess. Which will last ten minutes. Judge. Y yes What are you doing? A ten minute recess now. But wait, I... Just bang your flimsy gavel and get on with it, man! Y yes Um, this court will take a ten minute recess. I feel so bad for this guy. <laughs> Who's running this court anyway? <laughs> oh shit. Edgeworth, what's going on here? Your fingerprints were on the murder weapon? Um. Hmm. And that foggy photo makes one thing clear the only one who could have shot that man was the person in the photo. True. Was that you in the boat? Yes, it was me. What? But you must believe me, I didn't shoot him. Then who did? I don't know. You don't know? Weren't you right there? Edgeworth! You're giving me nothing! Why? I think you've got this. I heard a gunshot from very close by. 
Then the other man fell from the boat. I can't say why, but I thought at the time that he had shot himself. You, you mean it was a suicide? That's the only explanation I can come up with. How am I going to convince anyone of this? Say, Maya. Huh? What? Any progress with Mia? Oh, um, sorry. It's no good. Uh, I know. I'm no good for anything, am I, Nick? If I can't call my sister, I might as well not be here, right? No, I need you here. I can see you're always trying to help out. Even if you don't actually help, it's the thought that counts, right? It's okay, Nick. You don't have to make me feel better. I don't know anything about trials or defense. What's more, I'm a spirit medium who can't even contact spirits. Aw, everyone has their off days. It's okay. I mean, I've just been getting lucky lately. But you never know when my luck is going to run out. Really? Whoa, right? Don't jinx this case any more than it already is. It's bad for my heart. Oh, um, oh, sorry. Oops. <laughs> you gotta be a big boy and learn how to lawyer on your own. You like Court my is now back in session. Mr. Von Karma, call your witness. Wow, my, my voice just died, didn't it? My throat just like was no. No, okay. Yes, of course. Will Miss Lotta Hart take the stand? Oh crap. I- I'm about- oh god. I just realized what I'm about to have to do. I am going to have to go back and forth between Von Karma, myself, and Lotta Hart. And I hate life choices. Lotta Hart, you are a research student at a university. That I am! Good. Begin by telling us what you saw the night of the incident. And don't add anything trivial or subjective. Understand? Eh. Y'all need to learn some manners. I will break you in half. Understand. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Jeez. Um, very well. Your testimony, please. It was Christmas Eve, just after midnight, I reckon. I need more yeehaw in that voice. I'm trying! <laughs> I was in my car. I heard this bang come up from the lake. Oh, it's scary. Auntie Deuce Proud. God damn it, Val. <laughs> when I looked out the window, I saw two gents in a boat. Then there was another bang. There was a nary thing on the lake but that boat. Enough. Huh? Judge, she happened to take a photo of the incident. This is that photo, accepted as evidence. Well, this is a surprise. This looks like the very moment of the murder. Order, I will remove people from this courtroom if I do not have order immediately. As the witness has testified, she looked at the lake when she heard the shot. There were no other boats on that lake. So the man in the boat with the victim must have been the one who shot him. Yes, it was the defendant, Miles Edgeworth. Order! 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 I will have order! Well, Judge... The evidence is decisive. I have very little doubt about this case. Very well, this court finds the defendant. Objection! Wait, your honor! I haven't cross-examined the witness yet! A cross-examination. Hi, Fuss. Yes, hello. We have photographic proof. What question can there possibly be? 
this photo is worth a thousand words, and they all read guilty. You lose. Or, do you claim to have found a contradiction in her testimony? Fucking hell, we're going straight to the penalties, aren't we? Very well, if you have to, you may cross-examine the witness. You will only flounder and ask meaningless questions. You will fail to find anything. And then I will have you held in contempt of court! Um, Nick? Contempt? Contempt of court, you know, I guess I understand. Well, what are you going to do? Do you really think there was a contradiction with the facts in her testimony? I mean, there has to be, otherwise I'm fucked! I think I noticed one little thing. Wow, I'm impressed, Nick! I didn't notice anything! Right, let's take him on! Yeah, I got a bad feeling about this. I understand. I will cross-examine the witness. Tisk tisk tisk. Very well. I pray for your sake this isn't a waste of time. Okay. Yeah, they're you just they're going to start yelling at me in a minute. Why were you camping there anyway? I'm a research student at my university. I was taking pictures to use in my research. What research? This all sounds suspicious. Miss Hart. Hi, Fuss. Is there a reason you're on my desk? Could you be more specific about your research? What does the witness's motive in camping by the lake have to do with this case? The answer is nothing. I object to this line of questioning. Objection sustained. W wait now, I'm the one who says that. Well then say it already! Objection sustained. Thanks for nothing, your honor. Fice, no! How am I doing? Yes, hello my Fice. Mr. Wright, the witness has answered the question in full. Ugh. No need for further questions. Objection sustained. Um, that's what I'm... Sustain! Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, of course. <laughs> oh, this guy is such an asshole. Oh, great. Enough! I think we've heard all we need to hear, Mr. Wright. It seems you are unable to find a contradiction in the testimony worth noting. B but your honor! You keep your promise, Mr. Wright. I am afraid that I will have to penalize any further outbursts by holding you in contempt of court. And if that happens, you'll have to leave the courtroom immediately. Understood? Uh-huh. Nick! Lotta's testimony is fishy, Nick. Real fishy. I know what you mean. But if I can't say anything, what can I do? I believe we've covered the evidence sufficiently to make a decision. Yes, now it is time to save Scrum. Then pass your judgment. Very well. Mr. Miles Edgeworth, please take the stand. Hold it! W who was that? Yes, hello, my love. It, it was me, Maya. It, is something wrong? Do you need to use the facilities? No, I do not. Lot of heart. Your testimony stinks. It's unclear whether you were actually looking at the lake. It's highly doubtful you actually saw Mr. Edgeworth. Hi, Fuzz. Tell us the truth. This is a matter of life or death. Lotta, 
Did you really clearly see Mr. Edgeworth that night? Fuss is being extra today. Yes, she is. Because I'm getting excited, being loud, and changing my voice all at the same time. <laughs> Did you see him fire that pistol? You will stand down. The court does not acknowledge the defense's outburst. Answer me, Lotta! What's the big idea? Treating me like some kind of criminal! I saw him! I swear it! I saw Edgeworth! Enough, Judge. Declare the defense in contempt of court. E yes, yes, of course. I'm sorry, but you were warned. Guard, escort Mr. Wright out of the courtroom. He is in contempt of court and must leave. No. No! Wait. Ri oh, thank you. Wait. I was the one who made the outburst, Your Honor. Nick is innocent. Ha. What's the difference? All that remains is for the guilty verdict to be declared. Isn't that right, Mr. Phoenix? Right? No. No, that's wrong. Wrong. What? Did you hear what Miss Hart just said? She said she clearly saw Mr. Edgeworth. That was not in the testimony. That changes her testimony and I have a right to cross-examine her again. Order. 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 I will have order. You're in contempt of court. It's too late for wild claims. Judge, sustain, sustain my objection. I'm sorry, Mr. Von Karma, but I cannot. What? Miss Lotta Hart has made a new testimony. The defense does have a right to cross-examine her again. But he's in contempt of court! No, I am! If you're going to arrest someone, arrest me! Hmm. Very well. Maya Fay, you will leave the courtroom immediately. Nick, I did what I could. You have to do the rest. Good luck. Maya. That's right. Maya's been arrested twice. <laughs> I care not for this melodrama. Listen well, Mr. Wright. I do not tolerate badgering of my witnesses. I'm running out of time. Yeah, I, I notice you don't tolerate badgering. You also don't tolerate the proper proceedings either. So, you know, fuck you. I'd better find a contradiction here or else. Mr. Wright, begin your cross-examination. Got you. Got you, Miss Hart. Finally. Oh, what? You got what? Look at this photograph. The photo I took? The photo I took? The very same. There's something I want you to see in this photo. It's quite clearly visible. The fog, Miss Hart. So? So? This picture was taken with professional, high-quality film, correct? Yet, even it could not capture the faces of the men on the boat. Yet you claim you saw Mr. Edgeworth. How? What? Oh, what? I... Mr. Wright has a point. That's why I told her not to say that in her testimony. Please. Yet now she has said it, Mr. Von Karma. How could you possibly see Mr. Edgeworth? Explain yourself, Miss Hart. What? Could you see the defendant that night? Uh, of course! I said I could, and I meant I could! Then please testify as to the circumstances of your sighting. I did it. I finally found a hole in Von Karma's carefully vague testimony. How Edgeworth was seen. 
You're right. It was a cold night, and the fog was thick as grits. So once I was finished setting up my camera, I got back in the car. Still, I brought my binoculars with me. When I heard that noise out on the lake, I looked with my binoculars. See? No problem. Hmm. You used binoculars. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. This one better be good. Alright, am I going to- am I going to get penalized again? For cross-examining? Yes. You were photographing shooting stars? That's a lie. Says- says who? I saw the camera you set up yesterday. It was pointed directly at the lake. You have to point a camera upwards to take photos of the stars, Miss Hart. Ah! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? The witness was not at the lake to photograph shooting stars, Your Honor. Nah. Well then, what exactly was she pho photographing? Your Honor, take a look at this. What was Miss Hart trying to photograph at the lake? I knew, okay, I knew this was the setup for her motivation. I just wasn't sure which order it had to go in, okay? <laughs> Miss Hart, this is what you were trying to photograph. What's this, a newspaper article? Gordy? Ah, the sighting at Gord Lake. Well, Miss Hart? I, I never heard of no lake monster. You got proof or something? Let's see you prove that I was down at the lake trying to photograph this Gordy. You set up your camera for sound. Very well, let's see. And no joking around this time, please. What is proof that the witness was trying to photograph Gordy, the lake monster? The proof, Miss Hart, is your own camera. Ah! Your camera was set to take photos in response to loud noises, correct? Thus, this photograph here, taken when a gun fired on the lake. And here, this article about Gordy. According to this article, Gordy made a loud noise when it emerged. Well, you were trying to photograph Gordy, weren't you? That's why you would set your camera to respond to loud noises. Order! Order! I see. I too thought it was a little strange. Yeah, sure you did. Well, Miss Hart, you were camping there to try and take a photo of Gordy, weren't you? Yeah. Not bad. Are all you lawyers that smart? So smart boy, I was down there trying to photograph Gordy. You got me. So what? Huh? That don't change what I saw now, does it? Exactly. What you just used several precious minutes of our time to prove is nothing more than that the witness is an idiot who thinks monsters exist. Hey! But as she so succinctly said, so... What? It changes nothing. Not true! You were hiding the whole thing about Gordy for some reason, I know it. But what could it have been? Whatever it is, I'm getting to the bottom of this. Miss Hart, why did you hide the fact you were searching for Gordy from the court? Please revise your testimony. What side is Scary Auntie on? Scary Auntie is on the side that gets her the most attention. <laughs> Right. Fine, I'll testify. It won't change nothing, though. Something will change. It has to. And I'm going to spot it. Mm. Actually, I'm not a research student at a university. I'm an investigative photographer. Imagine what a scoop it'd be if I got a picture of that monster. That's why I was camping out by the lake. But that's all I was hiding. When I heard the bang, I looked right straight out the lake. 
There wasn't much else to look at, so I just watched the boat the whole time. Then I saw a flash near one of the man's hands, and I heard another gunshot. I was looking right at that boat the whole time, crossed my heart, and hoped to fry. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. The witness's testimony is unchanged from before. Whether she is a research student or photographer has no bearing on this case. There is no need to waste more of our time with another pointless cross-examination. Uh, hmm. Bullshit, sir! I claim the defense's right to cross-examine the witness, your honor. Von Karma's up to something, I know it. He doesn't want me to cross-examine her because... Why? Was there a contradiction? Very well, you may begin the cross-examination. You seem sure of yourself. You must have something in mind. Ha. Huh. That would be a first. <laughs> Very funny. You understand that this is your last chance at a cross-examination, Mr. Wright. If there is no problem with the testimony this time, we will let the witness leave. I will announce my verdict at that time, Mr. Wright. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Oh, fuckleberries. Miss Hart, were you really looking at that boat? What's with you? Of course I was looking at the boat. It was the only thing out there. Any normal person would look at it. I agree. Any normal person would. But you are far from normal. Wow, shots fired, Phoenix. What? Y'all want to step over here and say that to my face? You were camping in the lake to take a picture of Gordy. Think about it. What would you do if you heard a loud noise? You'd be scanning the lake for any sign of Gordy. That's what. You wouldn't give the boat a second thought. Ah! May their bacon always burn. Yes. I will have order. Continue, Mr. Wright. You testified that you were watching the boat through binoculars. However, you wouldn't need binoculars to watch that boat. You needed them to search for Gordy, and that's what you were doing. Eh. Eh. Mm. Well. Eh. Well, now that y'all mention it, I did sort of take my binoculars and kind of scan the lake a bit. I mean, Gordy might be out there and all. Miss Hart, are, are you saying that you were not watching the boat? Sorry, y'all. I wasn't fibbing, really. I was just, I thought, you know, I could be witness to a murder and all. I kind of got excited. I was sure I was watching that boat. Till now. This, this is totally uncalled for. But, but hey, y'all got the photograph. You got proof. Yeah, we got proof that there are two people in that boat. And we can't tell who's who. Right, right. That's why I took this photo and... Witness, that's enough. You've had a long day. Shut your pie hole. Shut, shut my what? What was she going to say? She took the photo and what? Wait a second. She even had a photograph to prove it, sir. But you really can't tell from the photo who's shooting, sir. That's why she said she's going to enlarge the photo, sir. She said it'll drop the quality a mite, but you should let us see who's who, sir. She enlarged that photo. Why won't Von Karma let her show it? I've got a hunch. I bet that enlarged photo so sh shows something bad for Von Karma. Miss Hart, look at this photograph. You enlarged this photograph, did you not? Yeah, I did! Why has that enlargement not been presented to the court? Because it does not exist. What are y'all talking about? You were the one who told me not to show it in court in the first place. Yo, fool! Should we consider a save counter? No. <laughs> what's, the meaning of, what's the meaning of this, Mr. Von Karma? Uh, mm. 
Miss Hart, show the photo to the court. Show us the enlargement. The prosecution objects to the submission of this evidence. Objection denied. If it's that safe heavy, do it anyway. No, Maple! Maple, don't you dare! No! The witness will show the enlargement to the court. Here you go! That's a left-handed gunshot. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a left-handed gunshot right there. Regardless, I will accept this as evidence. Happy now, Mr. Wright? Yes, very much so. Lefty, not a righty. Exactly! You asked for the enlargement, you got the enlargement. And little good it has done any of us. That is why I requested she not show it. Hmm. I suppose this means that the cross examination Oh, no, you don't! Is over, obviously. Oh, no, you don't! Then I would like to close the cross examination of Miss Lotta Hart. And none too soon. That was a flagrant waste of my time. Mr. Von Karma, do you have anything to add? I stated everything I needed to when this trial began. Decisive evidence. A decisive witness. What else could possibly be required? Nothing, of course. Then I believe it is time for me to declare my verdict. Wait, it's not supposed to go like this. There has to be a clue in this photo somewhere. There is! Let me do the thing! This is bad, real bad. What should I do? Your Honor, there is something decidedly strange with this enlargement. What might that be? Because Von Karma cheats. Mr. Wright, you will show the court what you mean. What about this photo is strange? Here, Your Honor, the shooter. I'm not sure I understand. What about the shooter is strange? Look at the hand holding the pistol, your honor. The hand? That hand directly ch contradicts another piece of evidence. This man's left hand does what? Let me show you. I'll show you the evidence that this left hand contradicts. The evidence is clear. The man in this photograph is holding that pistol in his left hand. However... The prints on the murder weapon were from Edgeworth's right hand. Ergo, the man shooting the pistol in this photograph is not Mr. Edgeworth. Now that everyone in the courtroom has quieted down, I would like to reconvene this court of law. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. So much rabbling. I mean, yeah. Rabble. Rabble in everywhere. Wait, are we done with Lotta? Not quite yet. You've given us definitive proof today. We now know that it was not Mr. Edgeworth who fired the pistol that night. However, this leaves us with a rather large problem. If Mr. Edgeworth didn't do it, then who shot our victim? Precisely. As we have seen, there were no other people on the lake that night. Who but the defendant could have shot the victim? Oh. There's only one explanation remaining. The man who shot the victim was none other than the victim himself. Order! Order! So you are saying that the victim committed suicide? Yes, Your Honor. I can think of no other explanation. Hmm. Indeed, that does seem to be the only remaining option. I am so very, very sorry, Mr. Wright. But suicide is out of the question. What? An examination of the victim's wound reveals the distance at which he was shot. The distance? 
the victim was clearly shot from further than a meter away. A meter? That's three feet. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for us uncultured colonials. <laughs> there is no way that it could have been suicide. Order, order, Mr. Von Karma, are you sure of the accuracy of your data? Of course, I had already considered the possibility of suicide, you see. Oh, well, thanks. Yeah, why couldn't you tell me that in the autopsy report before the court convened? America, fuck yeah, no metric system here. Hmm, I see. Very well. Allow me to state my opinion. Considering the situation, the shooter had to be the defendant, Mr. Edge. What? Bullshit! <laughs> However, the prints on the gun reveal that the shooter was not, in fact, Mr. Edgeworth. This is a conundrum. Therefore, I would like to suspend proceedings for this trial for the day. The court orders the defense and the prosecution to further investigate this matter. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. That is all. Court is adjourned. Hey, yo! We live to see another day. Whew, that was a close one. Yeah, I've got more investigating to do and Maya's in jail again. Hey, don't you have anything to say? No. I have yet to be declared innocent, right? Well, yeah, but what happened out there on that lake anyway? If he didn't commit suicide, then who? The shooter was about a meter away, too. What? Don't give me that look. I did not kill him. I was just kidding. Um. Look, I'm going to go check on Maya. Oh, right. What? Tell her something for me. What? Tell... Tell her to watch what she says in court. That's all. Would it kill you to just state how you really feel with a thank you, Edgeworth? Yes, it would apparently kill Edgeworth to show basic human courtesy. Yeah, no, it took us almost two hours just to get through that. I requisitioned a transcript of Lada's entire testimony. I thought it might give me some ammunition for the trial tomorrow. Of course, she didn't see the shooter, so the only part of her testimony that stood was the bang she heard. Maya. Hey, Nick, it's you. I'm glad Mr. Edgeworth made it through the day okay. It's a relief. Hey, why'd you do that anyway? I don't know. I just knew I had to do something. I know I'm not the lawyer my sister was. I'm sorry. Well, you did save the day. Just behave from now on, okay? Okay. Oh, hey, Detective Gunshu. Hey, pal. The trial today, it, uh... Yeah, what about the trial? Well, I was going to say good show, but it wasn't really all that. Though you did save Mr. Edgeworth, I guess. I just wasn't sure how to thank you, sir, you know? Uh, thanks. Alright, Gumshoe, what have you got for me? Detective Gumshoe, any idea what strategy Von Karma is planning for tomorrow? It sounds like he's bringing in another witness, sir. Another witness? Oh, right. He said something about that in the trial today. There were two witnesses. I was wondering who that other witness was. Uh, who was it? Sorry, sir. As much as I'd like to, I'm not at liberty to divulge that information. Right. Oh, right. I wanted to ask you something about Edgeworth. What's up, sir? 
Is he afraid of earthquakes? I never heard anything about that before. Um, Mr. Edgeworth doesn't talk about himself too much, see. But there's one thing that's clear as day. Him hating crime the way he does, and him becoming a prosecutor, and him being scared of earthquakes, it all started with that incident, sir. The DL6 incident? Yep, that's the one, sir. Fifteen years ago, when he saw his father shot before his very eyes. He still feels the pain now. You can see it in his eyes, sir. I wanted to talk to you about Maya. Huh? Oh, she's not out on bail yet? That's strange. I told them to let her go as soon as they had their report written up. Man, I don't know what would have happened in that courtroom today if it weren't for her, sir. Seeing her get dragged out by the bailiff? I'll be honest with you, pal. I shed a tear or two. Mr. Edgeworth, he was so moved, I saw his lip trembling, sir. Really? Cold as ice, Edgeworth. He was really grateful for what she did, you know, sir? I'm going to head back to the station. I'll get the report on Maya and get her out of there as soon as I can, sir. Thank you. Oh, wait. Um, I was wondering, how much is bail going to be? Don't worry about that. Mr. Edgeworth is posting the whole amount. What? Edgeworth? Didn't I tell you, sir? He's grateful to her for what she did. Alright, pal. Well, don't forget to go pick her up, okay, sir? Hmm. Maybe I can get Edgeworth to pay this month's rent, too. Yeah, because that's gonna fly. Hey, Nick! You finally came! They just finished the paperwork! I'm free to go! Free at last, huh? Those interrogators were really mean! They were like, okay, what did you do this time? Like I was some kind of criminal! Can you believe it? Well, they let you out in the end, didn't they? Mm. Oh, that reminds me. Thanks for bail! Thank Edgeworth. Huh? He posted bail for you. He said he was grateful for what you did. Mr. Edgeworth did that? I have to make it up to him! We got to win this case, Nick! There aren't many cops around today, are there? They're probably back at the precinct working up the case against Edgeworth. Hmm. Hey, y'all! Oh, God. Hey, it's Lotta! Y'all really did it today! What did we do now? No, I'm not complaining. See, I did a little thinking. A little self-reflection, you might say. I realized that being a witness is a mighty big responsibility. But I just went up there and started blabbing any old thing that came to mind. Lotta. So, you see, I want to make it up to y'all. Make it up? How? Kidding. <laughs> Lotta, what do you mean by making it up to us? Well, you see... Actually, I got a bit of information for you. What? That Von Karma didn't want me to say nothing about it. What information? Now we're getting to the heart of it. See, I reckon we might be able to do ourselves a little exchange. Exchange? Um, I thought this was to make it up to us. Right. I propose a little exchange to make it up to you. Uh-huh. What? Information don't come cheap, my friend. Uh, hey. Hey. I see you thinking, my, oh, how, un, un, how unsophisticated these southern folks are. It's written all over your face. Let me tell you, most southerners are way more sophisticated than you. I'm just the exception, okay? Well, what'll it be? We gonna deal or what? What do we do, Nick? We don't have any other leads, so I don't think we have a choice here. Okay, how much? Huh? You completely off your rocker? I may not be sophisticated, but I'm not trying to rob the poor. Huh? The only fair exchange for information is information. Listen good. What I need from you is information about Gordy. Whoa, 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 Gordy? But, but Gordy doesn't, I mean, Gordy might not exist. Then bring me proof that shows he don't. 
Uh, I'll be keeping watch from the car, okay? You see something, y'all come to me first. Got it? Okay. Right. See y'all later. Okay, Nick. Let's get hunting. Hunting? You don't seriously mean. Gordy? I sure do. What about Edgeworth? We're searching for Gordy for him, Nick. Don't you get it? Okay, and how exactly do we search for a make-believe monster? Uh, maybe we can find a monster myth specialist? The, the Steel Samurai, Nick. Yo, Maya! Larry, what the heck is that? Oh, it was my girl Keyonce's idea. She was all, if you like, put this here. It would be, like, really cool. Dude, she gave it to me along with the banner. Wow! That's real impressive she could find those for you. Well, she knows a lot of people. And that show's finished now, so she got them for free. Right. Curses you. Hey there, pal. What's up? You look out of sorts. Wait, you didn't go and do something that's going to hurt Mr. Edgeworth's case again, did you, sir? What do you mean again? Whatever, have a seat, pal. I'm here for you if you need anything. Besides money, that is. Uh-huh. Say, Detective Gumshoe, do you know Gordy? The monster down at Gord Lake? Not personally, no. Well, we're looking for it. Huh. Are you out of your mind, sir? <laughs> you got time to go wild monster hunting? How about doing a little questioning for me then, sir? Um, okay, Detective Gunshoe is scaring me, Nick. I told Detective Gumshoe about the deal with Lotta. Nick, try telling him sooner next time! Uh, sorry. I see, pal. Sorry for shouting at you, sir. Okay. I, Detective Gumshoe, will aid your search for Gordy, sir. Huh? I'll loan you one of our newest secret weapons for finding evidence. Really? You can take whichever one you like. Okay, give us the goods. Hold on now, everything in due time. First, let me show them to you. These are our best and brightest. Introducing secret weapon number one, missile. Missile? He's a canine police dog, still in training. Missile, missile, here boy. Oh my God, he's so cute. <gasps> I would die for missile. I would kill for missile. If anything happened to Missile, I would destroy the world and then myself for letting anything happen to Missile. Y'all just a little extra on that, okay? Here he is. Hey, he's cute. Look, Nick, cute dog. A cute dog. And this will help us how? Borf! Next, secret weapon number two. A fishing pole. Here, this is my own personal pole. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for a monster. Yeah. How are we supposed to catch a whole sea monster with a fishing pole? Never know until you try, sir. <sighs> okay, this next one is the last one. No, please, I'm already overwhelmed by our choices. Secret weapon number three. A metal detector. Here. Detective Gumshoe, we're looking for something alive. Right? How are we supposed to find it with a metal detector? Hey, you never know, sir. It might have been eating soda cans. Well, which will it be? Um, I can't make up my mind, Nick. My mind, Nick. They all seem so perfect. I can't make up my mind either for the totally opposite reasons. Oh, well, I suppose I can't hurt to borrow one of them. Um, we'll start with the cute doggo. Sure thing, pal. Be good to him. Boy! 
K, 10 out of 10? Absolutely. He's so cute! Oh boy. K9 unit in training with very cute, shiny eyes. Doggo! It's a doggo! Hey, y'all! Well, y'all find anything out about Gordy? Um, no, nothing. Well, keep moving. It gets cold out here at nighttime. It is a little chilly. Ace Attorney is a lovely balance of serious court stuff and whimsy. I see that. I do see that. I think I have to sneeze. Whoa, whoa, no, you don't. No sneezing. What's you? I told y'all no sneezing. See, I set the camera to respond to things a little softer than a bang. It trigger on one of Von Karma's finger snaps now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, sorry's nice, but what about my film? Yeah, pay the lady. <laughs> uh. You said no, and then the ad you got started singing no, and you were very thrown off. I'm sorry, Maple. I learned something in today's trial, that's for sure. Testifying is serious business. That's why I decided not to talk about that case anymore. Huh? Whoa, didn't you say you had information about the case? Tell us that, at least. Like I said, I'll trade it for the dirt on Gordy. What are you going to do if Gordy doesn't exist? I'll quit being an investigative photographer. What? After all, I only have one photo to my name so far. Was it a good one? You bet. A UFO. Uh, a UFO? Anyway, if I can't get a career making photo this time around, then that's it. I'll quit and go back to school. Huh? So you really are a university student? Yeah, well, I'm taking a break for a bit. Right. Wait, we just went through this. Alright, so I guess that's not going to clear until I finish with Gordy. Hi, Lotta! Oh, cute! He's yours! He's a canine police dog. His name's Missile. Huh. Canines are the ones they use to sniff for things, right? I wonder what Gordy smells like. Hmm. I hadn't thought about that. Hmm. Okay, Nick. This looks like a good spot. A good spot? For what? Time to do some fishing. She's serious. Um, what are you going to use for bait? Oh! Yeah, oh. Mmm, I figured something like this would happen. We should have brought Missile along with us, too. At least then we'd have bait. I would never. I would never. Nick, how could you? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Huh. Some jokes are better left untold. Oof, she hit me. Okay, watch this, Nick. Just try not to reel in any empty cans or boots, okay? Here we go. Ack, my leg! I am going to have to pay Lotta so much money for this stupid film. Hey, wh what are you doing? I'm sorry, Lotta. Don't tell me y'all are on some film company's payroll. Eh, pay her. My poor, poor, poor wallet.
Lana, wait! For catching Cordy! A fishing pole? Are you out of your doggone mind? Yes, I mean, yes, it's a fishing pole. Huh. I never thought of that. Good luck. Thank you. I don't believe it. Am I done with the fishing pole? Was that literally all I needed to do? Mm, yep. There it goes. Oh, that's a terrible sound. Nick! It's beeping! The metal detectors found something! Sure is loud enough about it. Whatever it is, it must be in those bushes. Go check it out, Maya. Why do I have to check it out? Uh, Nick! Look! Huh? An air tank? Huh. The valve looks broken. I thought it was Gordy. Maya, first of all, why would Gordy be in the bushes? And second of all, why would a metal detector react to a sea monster? Oh! Huh? There's something wrapped around this air tank. It looks like a string of flags. Well, we might as well take it with us now that we found it. It's heavy. Hmm. Air tank of dubious value. All right, butts. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry, I wanted to ask you about this tank. Have you seen it before? Huh? Me? No, never. Who the heck would go diving in the middle of the winter? There's something about the way his eye twitched when I showed him the tank. I think I'd better pursue this line of questioning a little further. What? An air tank? What about it? Larry? Is it yours? Why would I have a thing like... Oh god, I'm drifting back into southern. Why would I have a thing like that? Look, see how there's a string of flags around the tank valve? Shut up, Al. It's just like the string of flags around your steel samurai there. Uh... N must be a coincidence, dude! There's strings of flags everywhere these days, dude! Southern Velvet is your favorite fabric. Shoosh! Like... Like elementary schools and used car dealerships! Look, why would I need a tank anyway? To inflate something. You used this to inflate that, didn't you? Inflate what? What else? That big, puffy steel samurai. Uh... Uh... Now why would you go asking- Yep, I'm slipping. I can't- I can't hold Cal- Okay, I can't hold Surfer Dude, apparently! If it's just the word dude, I can do that all day. Dude! 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 I can do that all day! But any other words, apparently, I can't hold it. It looks like I hit the nail on the head. Rat. Rat. Yep. Actually, um... See, the compressor I always use was on the fritz, dude. <laughs> so I tried using the tank to inflate it. Just once. And, uh, it didn't go so well. As I suspected. It didn't go so well. Uh, yeah. Do you think you could be a little more specific? Come on. Look, it's embarrassing, so I really don't want to talk about it, dude. Tell us. Tell us. Fine. Nope, there it is. Whatever. It's like I said, the compressor was busted. I, I can't. I can't right now. 
So I took the tank and tried to fill the samurai up with it. And then... The valve busted open and made this incredible noise. Larry is southern now. Deal with it. I refuse. No! Don't clip that. And that tank there took off like a rocket. And it took my poor deflated steel samurai with it. What? Off into Gord Lake? It sure scared me out of my gourd, that's for sure. Um, so the tank and the steel samurai you were trying to fill up flew away. What happened next? Well, all that happened on the 20th or so. The 20th? That was a week ago. Now, as far as I could see, the tank went flying out into the lake. So, I went out every night in a boat looking for it. I mean, Kiyonse gave me that steel samurai after all. And when did you find it? Just the night before last. It flew way out there. It took me four whole days to find it. The night before... The, the night before last was the night of the murder. Sorry for not telling you, Nick. Actually, I was here on the night of the murder. But you see, I went home before midnight. So you didn't know about what happened. No. That's too bad. It's not all bad. We've solved one mystery, at least. A mystery? Maybe we should go tell her. It was almost Christmas! Well, Mr. Lawyer, I got the info y'all need. Y'all got the scoop on Gordy for me yet? Lotta? There is no such thing as Gordy. What? How can y'all be so sure? Really, Nick? Y'all got some proof Gordy don't exist? The proof that Gordy doesn't exist is here. Of course I have proof. No lawyer worth his badge would make a claim without the proof to back it up. Here's the proof that Gordy doesn't exist. Larry's air tank? What are y'all doing with an air tank? This is Gordy. Um, excuse me? What exactly are you saying, Nick? There's a stand near here. A hot dog stand. A hot dog stand. There's a giant inflatable samurai doll there. About a week ago, an idiot, who happens to be a friend of mine, tried to fill it. He used this air tank, and when the valve blew, the tank flew into the lake. Apparently, it made a pretty loud bang when it flew off. A bang? The tank, along with the still deflated samurai, fell into the lake. At the same time, a couple was taking a photograph of the lake. This photo. Wait, so you're saying that Gordy is really the Steel Samurai? Ah, uh, well, that's a fine way to ruin a gal's dreams. I'm sorry, Lotta. Nah, it's okay. You win. I'll give you your info like I promised. Poor Lotta. So tell us this information you have. A promise is a promise, I guess. I overheard the cops around here saying something about the witness tomorrow. They said he's the caretaker of the boat rental place up the path there. Boat rental? There's someone there? I mean, it looks so deserted. Just an old guy, living all by himself. Y'all should go check it out. Thanks, Lotta. We will. Let's get cracking, Nick. Hold on. Something else? Yeah, the night of the murder. My camera clicked twice. You know. 
I was waiting for this. She literally said it. She said she heard two shots, but only gave me one picture. Wait, so you have another photo? Well... Yeah, but there's nothing in it at all. Just the lake. I figured it wouldn't be much use as evidence, so I kept it to myself. Well, it might not be helpful at all, but here, take it. The second lake photo. Taken at 11.50. Bye now. Y'all take care. Oh god, there's a bird. No. I am not reading any more old man lines. I'm not. I hurt. I will read this normally and you guys will deal with it. Fired. Meg, that you? I can do normal voice. Hey, is that Keith with you? Where have you two been? I've been worried sick. Nick, you handle this. Um, I think I'll leave this one up to you, Maya. Meg! Yes? Finally made up your mind, have you? My mind? You'll run the pasta shop when I'm gone. Pasta? Glad to hear it, glad to hear it. You make your old man proud. When you kids left the house, I didn't know what to think. How am I supposed to keep this place running, an old man like me? Polly, the kids are home. Nope. Hello, hello, squawk. Nick, what was that? A parrot, the one on that perch. Keith! Y yes. I leave the wet noodle in your capable hands, Sonny. Oh my god. The wet noodle. <laughs> oh my god. Nick, what's the wet noodle? Um, based on the available evidence, I'd say it's the name of his pasta shop. That's a relief, isn't it, Polly? Hello, hello, squawk. Uh, yep. Mm. He fell asleep. I guess he's relieved. Um, a pasta shop. I yep, to think the wet noodle will live on when I'm gone. My father started it, you know, so that makes you two the third generation. Meg? Yes? Tomorrow we'll start with the secrets of dough tossing. Dough tossing? Very reliable witness we got here. Oh yeah, completely and utterly. You too, Keith. Y yes You'll be the best pasta wrangler the West has ever seen. Pasta wrangler the West? Isn't pasta from Italy? Meg! Yes! You know the best pasta's always been made west of the Rockies, don't you? Right, of course. Everybody knows that. Nick? Huh? How long do we have to keep up this all in the family charade? This old man must know something about the murder. We're not leaving until we find out what that is. Um, this is a boat rental shop, right? What are you talking about? This here's the Palace of Pasta, the wet noodle. Do you want to hear Velvet voice a great... What? A great what? It's a burb. I'm scared. I'm just going to sit here and be scared now. So now that you mention it, we haven't gotten any or many orders for spaghetti lately. All the kids come up and say, yo dude, we want to ride in one of your boats. That's why I keep them boats out there.
youngsters these days, darned if I understand them. I'm pretty confused myself. Nick, this isn't going anywhere. But this old man is the witness tomorrow, right? We've got to find some way of getting information out of him. Wow, what, a, what an amazing parrot that is. Good morning. Hello. It ignored me. What, you forgot me? You gotta call her name first. Her name? Polly, how you been? Hello, hello. Walk. See? Neat, so the parrot's name is Polly. Too bad all she can say is hello. Har har. Oh, Polly can say lots of things. You just need to know the secret words. The secret words? Polly, Polly, what's your name? Polly. Guac. Hee <laughs> hee, cute. Maya's found a new friend. Look, Nick, he has an electric blanket on his table. Looks warm. That's a great idea. We should do that at the office. We can sit down with our clients, snug and warm, and drink hot cocoa. And what? Talk about murderers. Oh, you're a party pooper, Nick. I love how she checked the safe. Lots of fish. Something's funny, Nick. All these fish are saltwater fish. So he doesn't fish in the lake. We know Maya's real motive. Yeah. You're forgetting, Nick. He's running a pasta shop here. Uh... Now listen here, Keith. Remember that tricolor pasta we were talking about? Our rainbow co- Rain- Rainbow-y- Oly? Rainbow-y- Oly? I figured the I figured out the last color we should use. Indigo blue. Indigo blue? That didn't seem to work the way I thought it might. Oh no. Oh no. Kane's about to end stream and I wanted to raid him, damn it. You guys. Ah, my memory's gotten worse of late. That's why I just tell everything important to old Polly here. Everything important? Hmm, I wonder. Polly, what's the number to the safe? One, two, two, eight, Glock. All right. Hey, Polly, watch it, will ya? Hee <laughs> hee. See, Nick? All it takes is a little clever thinking. And a criminal mind. Quick, Nick, write that number down. Hey, don't get me involved in your little heist schemes. But I mean, if, if I'm going to have it. Really? All right, 
Well, he obviously needs something, but what? What am I missing? Because I want to be done. That a lawyer? Oh, it actually did something. Son of a bitch. That a lawyer's badge? Yes, it is. I don't believe it. This old guy is the first person to recognize my badge. I get it. Huh? I, yep, I got you figured out now. You're not Keith! Nick? Now's our chance to clear things up! Um, sir? No, I'm not Keith. And I'm not Meg, either! We're here investigating a murder that took place on this lake the other night. Please help us! Huh, a lawyer, huh? Please, mister? Alright, I'll help. But on one condition. What's that? When this case is over and done, you'll run the wet noodle. Sure. Nick! Are you sure about this? Hey, anything to get this case solved. Also, who wouldn't want to eat Phoenix noodles? I mean, valid? I guess so. That's my boy! Good for you, Keith! Wait, didn't I just say... You too, Meg. Yes? Heh heh heh. You bring a tear to your old man's eye, you know. Now, what was that you wanted to know? Speak up, Polly. Hello, hello. Quack. Uh, and now he's talking to the bird again. How do we get him to talk to us? And he's asleep. Okay, not that one. Yep, I've seen this. You know something about this, sir? Keith? Yes? It's okay. You can call me Dad. Dad, you know something about this? Oh, God. Yep, the other night, out on the lake. Yes? Yes? I know all about that. i seen it. Oh, good lord. Tell us. Tell us what you saw. Well, I suppose. Since you're taking over the shop and all. <sighs> Damn it. Alright. I forget the time, but it was pretty dark outside. Probably night, yep. It was after midnight, but okay. Then I heard this bang. So I looked outside. Then I heard another one. Bang! A little while later, this boat comes back. Then a young man walked by my window here. He was muttering something to himself. Hey, yep. Uh, what did he say? Hey, yep. Mm, I forgot. I'll remember tomorrow by court time. Promise. We need to know earlier than that. You know what? Eh? Little Terry was just here. Terry? Yep, that kid next door. You always used to make him cry, remember? He was wearing this tattered old coat. Got himself some whiskers growing out of his face. He must be talking about Detective Gumshoe. He comes up and tells me to come down to court tomorrow. Really? Somehow I don't think we're going to get much useful information from this guy. Maya, maybe we should be leaving. I think you're right. Oh, wait, I had one more question. Huh? Polly, Polly, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6, Squawk! Huh? What did she just say, Nick? One more time, Polly. Don't forget DL6, Squawk! 
What? The DL6 incident? Hey, mister. I, I mean, dad. This is getting weird. Who is this old guy? Why would that bird Polly know about DL6? Southern ASMR when? Never. We have to figure out who that old man is. Oh, what? He locked the door from the other side. Who could that old man be? I think I need to do a little. Re re I think I need to do a little more research on this DL6 incident. Maybe I should ask Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal! Long time no see. You don't look so happy, sir. What's wrong this time? Actually, we wanted to ask you something. Yeah. Tell me about the boat caretaker. Do you know the boat rental shop down at Gord Lake? Oh, yeah. The old man who runs it is appearing as a witness in court tomorrow, right? Uh huh. How did you? Hmm. <clears throat> that was supposed to be top secret. Do you know who that gold? Who that old man is, detective? Actually, I don't. He's a bit of an odd bird. I haven't been able to get a straight answer out of him. I decided first that he wasn't persuasive enough to stand and testify as a witness. That's why we called Miss Lotta Hart yesterday. As for who he is, we have absolutely no idea. Huh. Sounds suspicious. Uh. Detective Gumshoe, please help us. Huh? Huh? We need to know about the DL6 incident. Uh, that was when Edgeworth's father died. I can't help but think that it has something to do with this current case. To tell the truth, I don't know much about DL6 either. Mr. Edgeworth forbade us from reading the file. So, I'm afraid I can't show them to you either, pal. What? However, if you can convince me somehow that the DL6 incident is related to this case... Well, I guess I'd consider opening the file up. Oh, wait. I have a bird. What's that? A parrot? The old man at the boat rental shop's parrot. The parrot knew about the incident. That incident? DL6. What? Yeah. Oh, wait. I have a bird. Yeah, absolutely. Polly! Tommy, have we forgotten something? Squawk! Don't forget DL6, Squawk! Huh? I'm pretty sure that old man must have taught her that word. Yeah, but how would that old man know about the DL6 incident? Wait, what if... What if that old man was connected to DL6? Nick, you think he might be? I get ya. Sounds like you need information on the DL6 incident. Through there is the station's records room. I'll give you special permission to go in and find what you need. Alright, way to go, Detective Gumshoe! Okay, Nick, to the records room! I guess it's time we faced Edgeworth's past. Yeah, let's do it for him! Oh, I thought you said I was almost done. Wow! It's amazingly dusty. Ten years of files and ten years of dust, I guess. Let's find that DL6 stuff quick. Fifteen years ago, both me and Edgeworth were nine years old. We were almost through with fourth grade when he suddenly transferred. Because of DL6? Nick, I found out where the file is! Oh, thanks. Just let me know what you want to know about the DL6 incident. I'll go get the right file. I'm almost at 20 minutes. You said 15 to 20. Yeah, I was kind of hoping it would be closer to 15. Well, first I have to get a handle on the main facts. Like a summary. Right! Summary, summary, found it! Here you go. December 28th, 2001. That's exactly 15 years ago from the day after tomorrow. So in two days, the case is closed. The incident took place in the elevator of the district courthouse. What? 
Is this the same district courthouse where we're holding the trial now? Looks like it. There was a large earthquake at 2 p.m. on that day. Part of the court building collapsed and all of the lights went out. Wow, that was some earthquake. At the time, three people were trapped in the elevator. It took five hours for them to be rescued. Five hours? That would be scary like that in the dark. There was a lack of oxygen in the elevator and the, and the survivors were unconscious. The survivors? One of the three in the elevator had been shot in the heart. That was Mr. Edgeworth's father, wasn't it? He said that his father was shot before his very eyes. You forgot how old Ace Attorney is now? What? What? I see it! Yes! I see your hydrates! I am getting the hydrates! Thank you! If you wanted to do the sound effects, though, well, okay, that's fine. So Miles Edgeworth was one of the other passengers in that elevator. Do you have data on the victim, Edgeworth's father? Yeah, hold on. Victim, victim, here, found it! Gregory Edgeworth, 35, defense attorney. If he were still alive, he'd be 50. 35 with a nine-year-old. Huh. He had lost that day's case in court and got in the elevator with his son, Miles. Miles? Miles Edgeworth, of course. So he was in the elevator with his father. From the angle of the bullet and other evidence, it could not have been a suicide. The murder weapon, a pistol, was found in the elevator. The pistol had been fired twice. Where have I heard that before? Huh? It sounds just like this current case. What's going on here? Got any data on the suspect in there? Depends on the flavor of dessert. That would be the guy that my mom got arrested. Hold on, this is it. The man arrested as a suspect in DL6 was Yanni Yogi? He was a clerk in the court, apparently. So he must have been the third person. Oh, so he must have been the third person in the elevator. Well, then he had to have done it. But he was found innocent. Thanks to his defense lawyer, Robert Hammond. Hammond, the victim in our case. Yep. He lost all memory of being in the elevator. After he was declared innocent, he disappeared. Hmm, where could Yogi have gone to, I wonder? He may be closer than we think. Thank you, Phoenix, for not being a moron. I guess I know generally what happened in DL6 now. I still don't know what sort of impact the whole thing had on Edgeworth. Nick, are we going to take the whole file? There's too much. We'll never get it out. You're right. How about we just take what we think we'll need? Right. That's probably all we'll be able to find here. Now all that's left is the trial tomorrow. I wonder how Dad will do testifying in court. Uh, okay. Courtroom number three. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Miles Edgeworth. The defense is ready, Your Honor. 
And this asshole. Very well, apparently the prosecution is also ready. Who is the judge here, anyway? Mr. Von Karma, your opening statement. Dude. Are, are, are you... No, you're, you're clenching your fist. Are, I was about to say, are you taking a nap? But no, you're just being obstinate for the sake of being obstinate. Er, very well. No opening statement, so... Oh, there he goes. Not so fast, Judge. I was taking a meaningful pause before speaking. R right, of course you were. A prediction. Today's trial will end three minutes from now. Well, I can pretty much guarantee it won't simply because of the fact that I have to read everything. Order, order. Mr. Von Karma, what is the meaning of your statement just now? Bah, must you question everything? It will be over in three minutes. We have no time to waste. I'll call my witness now. R right. I call my witness, my decisive witness to the stand. It's that mysterious boat shop owner. Witness, state your profession. I am the proprietor of the of the restaurant, the Wet Noodle, at Gord Lake. Uh. And I uh, also rent boats. The night of the incident, you were in the boat rental shop, correct? Uh, yep, yep, I was. Please testify. Wait a second. We still haven't heard who this old guy is. All right. I'm not being punished for every little thing yet. But at the same time... Oh, hello. Badoo. <gasps> Rune! I'm in danger. Yes, Rune is successfully broken. Velvet.exe. And it's not even 20 minutes in yet. All right, I sent the refund. It should be fine. Anyway, right. Von Karma being a dick. We're going to save. I'm not getting I'm not getting penalized for every little thing yet, but it's not to say it's not going to happen. Wait a minute. The witness hasn't stated his name yet. Because I did not ask him, Mr. Wright. Bah. Actually, you did. You very much did. I have predicted this trial will end in three minutes. Stop asking trivial questions and cooperate. If I cooperated, you'd win. That's not how this works. The witness will state his name. Yeah, well, uh, I'm not really sure, are you? What do you mean? My memory, your honor. The witness does not remember anything beyond the last several years. Ergo, he cannot recall his own name. Hmm, he can't recall, you say? Yes, but the incident in question took place three days ago. He can testify. Very well. Bullshit. Let's hear his testimony then, shall we? Witness. It was the night of the 24th, just after midnight. Yep. I was in the restaurant where I, er, uh, rent boats, as usual. Yep. Then I heard a bang. Uh, yep. When I looked out the window, I saw a boat just a-floating on the lake. There, you did it right. Then I heard another bang. Just about then, the boat comes back to shore, and a man walks by my window. Hmm, very well. I'd like to begin the cross-examination. There is nothing to question in my witness's testimony. 
Ergo, no need for cross-examination. Besides, there are only 10 seconds left before our three minutes are up. Judge your verdict now. Um, uh, yes, Mr. Wright. Cross-examine the witness! What are you saying? Of course I'll cross-examine the witness. Hmm, very well. You may begin. Ah! Well, well, what was that? Let's rewind. Why try that again? Excuse me, Mr. Von Karma. Beta. Three minutes just passed. I see. Well, then, let's just take our time. You may cross-examine the witness. Are, are you sure? Oh, I, I just realized I forgot to press him on this one. Uh-oh. The dad! Dead certain, Keith! He said I can't believe he's dead as he was walking by, too! And Von Karma was waiting on that. Witness, are you sure that the person you saw was Miles Edgeworth? It was him, that Edgeworth boy. And he's dead. This sounds like decisive evidence indeed. I see no room for doubt. Von Karma. He lured me into cross-examining so he could set me up for a fall. Tisk tisk tisk. N Nick, I don't like the way things are going here. Everyone in the courtroom is glaring at us. I better act quick or this trial is going to be over. Your Honor, we proved in yesterday's trial that it could not have been Edgeworth who fired that gun. Mr. Wright, are you referring to the fingerprints from Edgeworth's right hand found on the gun and the photograph showing a man firing with his left hand? Exactly! That is easily explainable. I'm going to I'm going to rip his finger off and shove it down his throat. He could have wiped his prints after he fired. Then why are there prints on the gun? You are ignoring the truth of the matter here. Everything in this witness's testimony is true. Hmm. The judge is lost in thought. What should I do? Your Honor. This witness claims that Edgeworth said, I can't believe he's dead, but his word is all we have. Um, but his word is all we have. If we're, if he were telling a lie, Mr. Wright, in a court of law, the evidence tells all. Yes, and you're twisting the evidence to suit your needs. Apparently, you have yet to realize even this basic fact. If you say his testimony is a lie, then show us proof. Uh, Nick, do we have evidence? It's no good. There's nothing I can do. Uh, are you sure? To be honest, I don't know what to do anymore. Please. Can you hear me, sis? Please. We need your help. Nick needs you. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Three minutes was perhaps too high an expectation. However, 15 minutes isn't bad. This might be a new record. Enough! The witness may leave the stand. I think he's asleep. This court sees no reason to further prolong the trial. Nor is there any need for more time to decide- What the fuck?! This case is extremely clear. I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts. What?! No! Hmm. Well, fuck me! The fuck was I supposed to do there? The accused will surrender to the court immediately to be held pending trial at a higher court within a month from today's date. This court is adjourned. The fuck! Wait! Uh, who was that just now? Me? I, I don't know who's yelling, so I don't know what voice to give it. 
Huh? What? Larry! Oh, fuck. Alright, this is about to bite me in the ass. I can sense the bullshittery already. Oh. What are you doing here? Listen, you gotta listen to me, dude! I, I was, I was there, in the park, on the night of the murder! I, I wasn't, I wasn't sure about it till just yesterday. Evidence said three times, did it? Hold. Fired three times. You're right, thank you, Alti. I did not notice that. I wasn't sure about it till just yesterday, dude. But, but today I remembered it! Oh my god, I can't pull off Surfer, dude, to save my fucking life. Remembered what? The, the gunshot, dude! I heard it too! Order. What is the meaning of this? The verdict has been decided. I call for adjournment. One moment, Mr. Von Karma. You, so you say you heard a gunshot? Yeah, I did. A gunshot that night, dude. I was sitting here in the audience listening to the testimony. Then I realized something he said was different from what I remember. Anyhow, I can't just sit here and let you call Edgy a murderer. It's just not right, dude. I'll testify. Let me testify. I will have order. <laughs> well, this is the first time something has happened like this in my court. I'm not quite sure how to proceed. Judge, you've already given your decision. The trial is over. Nick, this is it. Larry's given us one final chance at this. She's right. If only it wasn't Larry. He can make things even worse. Mr. Edgeworth was just declared no guilty, Nick. It doesn't get any worse. You're right. Okay. Your Honor, if there is another witness, it is our duty to wow. hear him speak. Right here, right now. Oh, dear. Did that one go off properly? I don't even remember which one that one's supposed to be. But I will crank that up a little more so that we can hear it properly. A waste of time. The verdict cannot be overturned. Hmm. Not sure. Have volume low because your brother kept bugging you. Uh. Wow. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that's very low. Oh, that's Risley. That's why. Hmm. Allow me to speak my opinion. In all court proceedings, it is our duty to prevent an inaccurate verdict. In order to make sure no mistake has been made, every witness should be heard. What is this? I withdraw my previous verdict of guilty. Mr. Von Karma, I order you to call this new witness to testify. Now. What? The court will adjourn for a five-minute recess. After that, we will hear this new witness. Court is adjourned. Whew. That was too close. Sorry to keep you on the edge of your seat like that, Edgeworth. Hmm. I've seen worse. Yeah, right, Edgeworth. You're sweating bullets. I just wonder what Larry plans to say in there. Larry was at the lake that night? Yeah. He said he went looking for the steel samurai balloon that fell into the lake. 
All right. And he found the balloon in the air tank that night? Yeah. Hey, Edgeworth? Huh? You, you say something right? Yeah, a lot of things. You seem out of it. What's wrong? It, it's nothing. Hmm? Um, Mr. Edgeworth, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. What's that? Why are your fingerprints on the murder weapon? Oh. When he fell into the lake, I went into a daze. I couldn't understand what had happened. I couldn't think straight. Then I saw the pistol lying on the floor of the boat in front of me. I picked it up without thinking. I didn't have a reason, really. I see. Right. Yeah. This might be our chance. Our chance? Von Karma has only ever run perfect trials. Perfect trials. Perfectly prepared witnesses. Perfectly complete evidence. That's the secret to his, his success. This is the first time he's ever had to deal with something unexpected. He has to let someone he hasn't talked to testify before the court. And that someone is Larry. What are you getting at? It's likely his testimony will be full of holes, right? That's right, Nick. No 10 minute trial this time. We'll milk this one for all it's worth. Hey, it was 15 minutes. 15! Everything's on Larry now. Everything's on Larry. And it had to be Larry. Court is now back in session. Witness. Oh, thank you, Alti! Cheese. Oh. Okay. Please testify to the court about everything you saw on the night of December 24th. Right. Leave it to me, dude. Please, Larry, don't mess this one up. I hate to admit it, but you're our last chance. Hmm. Von Karma didn't even have time to prep his witness. I just hope Edgeworth is right about this being our big break. That night, I was out on a boat on the lake. I was looking for something, and I, um, I found it. So I quietly slipped the boat back in at the rental shop dock. But then, just as I was thinking about going home... I heard this bang. I looked out over the lake, but I didn't see a boat. So after I heard that single gunshot, I went home. Hmm. That was an unusually vague testimony, even for this court. In any case, Mr. Wright, you may begin your cross-examination. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Oh, there she is. Hello, ma'am. Uh-huh. Yeah. Then what? You gonna tell me all about it? And? Hi, pretty girl. Oh, I see you brought me a toy. I see. Of course, mommy just happens to be tethered today because headset is almost out of power, but you know, it's fine. Sure. What's wrong, Nick? It's Larry. I have no idea what he's going to say if I'm going to press him. I'm a little scared. Um, well, we've come this far. There's no way to go but forward, Nick. And she's not wrong. Well, what do you...
wait a sec, Larry. What? You only heard one bang? You're sure? That's what I said. But Miss Lotta Hart testified yesterday that she heard two bangs. And the old man just now said the same thing. They both heard two gunshots that night. Huh? Were you even listening? Were you paying attention at all to what they said? Yo, Nick, please! Huh? You know, something's been bothering me. I'm a witness. See, I'm like a customer here. So you gotta treat me nice and stuff, okay? Larry, I swear to all that is holy. I'm gonna do violence to you. Mr. Butts. What? You only heard one gunshot. Are you sure? Um, well, to tell the truth, I'm not sure. Eh? Not sure? How could you not be sure? Yeah, well, I, um, uh, I might have missed the other gunshot. I was, um, uh, I was listening to something else. Something else? My radio, dude! With my headphones! What? Order! Order! And stop that booing! M Mr. Butts, you were listening to the radio with your headphones. Y yeah, so what? Is that a crime? I listen to my radio. Everybody listens to the radio. What's the big deal? Hmm. Mr. Von Karma, your opinion. Waste of time. I do not accept this witness, nor his shoddy testimony. Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, should he continue the testimony? Um. Well, considering I'm literally grasping at straws. Your Honor, please, please allow the witness to continue his testimony. For the love of all that is holy. Bah! Nothing is more pitiful than a lawyer who doesn't know when he's lost. Very well, Mr. Butts. Please give your testimony and be sure to include details like your radio. R right. Leave it to me, dude. I wouldn't if there were any other way out of this. Believe me. It's lonely being alone on Christmas Eve. That's why I was listening to an all request show on the radio, see? I was listening to it real booming loud like. But I'm sure I heard that gunshot. I remember exactly what the DJ was saying when I heard it, too. You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yeah, what's the big problem? Can a man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Judge, can you believe a word this witness says? What he heard was probably nothing more than a drumbeat on the radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor. The witness said he remembers exactly what the DJ said when he heard that gunshot. Excuse me? DJ? An announcer. The guy who says stuff on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs. So he could have heard the, D the gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Wright. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. What did she say? Mr. Wright, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could knowing what a re radio DJ said do us? Indeed, Mr. Von Karma has a point. I'll allow the question only if you see some reason why we should care. 
I'm still grasping at straws, so of course we should care. We should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Um, well, how do you know if we don't ask, huh? Fine. Very well. Mr. Butts, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer saying when you heard the gunshot? Just when she said, hey, it's almost Christmas, I heard a gunshot. This is the most ludicrous testimony I have ever heard. But there is one gleaming ray of hope in there. I've got to press it until we get to the bottom of what happened. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with the face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily, dude. Is something the matter, Mr. Wright? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? The DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas when he heard that gunshot. Indeed. And? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. Do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irre irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. 12.25.015. 12, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. Poke all the buttons? Yeah, I'm poking all the buttons. This is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order. Order! What does this mean? The two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Yeah, the other two witnesses were prepped by Von Karma. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. W what? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you think about Mr. Buss's claim that he heard the gunshot before midnight? Still grasping at straws. Larry's no mistaken, Your Honor. He heard that gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Uh-oh. Look at this photograph. This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lotta Hart, with her automatic camera. The timestamp on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh. Hmm. But there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph. It's why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off in response to loud noises. Aha! Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake at 11.50 p.m. That's why this photograph was taken. In other words, when Larry heard that gunshot, it was most definitely still Christmas Eve. Indeed, it would seem that to be the case. Then where does that leave us? Miss Hart testified that she heard the gunshots after midnight. Are you claiming she was mistaken? Not at all, Your Honor. It is a fact that the camera also triggered 15 minutes after midnight. Your Honor, that night there were two sets of gunshots with a 25 minutes pause between them. Why would this be? Don't be fooled, Judge. That camera was set to respond to loud noises. Yes? There is no proof that the loud noise at 1150 was a gunshot. Why the witness could have sneezed, triggering the camera. 
hey, my nose was clear that night, man. Clear. Uh, well, Mr. Wright, there's no turning back now. And suddenly here come the punishments. More than there already were. Can you prove that the loud noise at 11.50 p.m. was indeed a gunshot? Please show the court evidence if you... This is my evidence. The murder weapon. Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When, then, was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order. Order. Hmm. That would make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leaves me wondering exactly what did happen that night on the lake. Exactly. If this is true, there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, another at 15 minutes after midnight. Why, I ask you. Why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes. Ah. Uh, what's wrong, Nick? I have it. I have it. Huh? Remember the case with the Steel Samurai? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Edgeworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch and I'm going to run with it. Right. I mean, is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your Honor. Y yes, Mr. Wright. The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Wright? Tisk, tisk, tisk. So you finally realize the truth. There can be no other murderer here than Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Bullshit. Wrong, Von Karma. A man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. I will shove that finger down your throat and make you shit it out. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. This was shown by the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It could not have been suicide. <sighs> well, the guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence at the, of the time at the shooting. That timestamp on the photo says 015. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Edgeworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain who the two men on the boat are. Well, okay, um, in that case, if Hammond was already dead and therefore could not have been on the boat, it had to have been the murderer.
Of course, it was Edgeworth in The Murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. W what? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous, Mr. Wright. Tell us the name of the murderer, then. The murderer's name? Uh, right. It's, um... I don't know, because he hasn't told me? Wait, who hasn't told me? Well, no. Hang on. Well, I know it's not these two, so I don't fucking know. I don't know the murderer's name. You don't know. Bah, again, you waste my time. I don't know because he never told us. Uh, the murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop. The old man. It has to be him because DL6 is a thing. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond, the caretaker of the boat shop. Where did he do this? There weren't any boats on the lake then. Why would he have to go all the way out on the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not on a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder, where did the murder take place? Okay. All right. So that's. All right. There's the snack stand. Isn't that where Lotta was camping? And that's the boat shop. Uh. Well, okay, if he's got his own boat shop, then he could just kill someone in the boat shop and then clean it up. Nice and simple. Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way he can meet the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. That night, he was out on the lake in the boat, in a boat, searching for something. He finds it and returns to the boat, and returns the boat. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned a boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Gord Lake? Please tell the court from the beginning. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? No, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. This was around 11.50. That was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in the boat with Edgeworth and went out into the middle of the lake. Then who fired the pistol on the boat, Mr. Wright? Um, well, it's still, it's still Edgeworth's right hand on the gun. So, I think it was the boat shop caretaker? Because Edgeworth had no plans to shoot anyone, obviously. So, yeah, it had to. 
Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both missed Edgeworth. On purpose. Wait a minute. Y yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to he hit anyone? Uh, details, details. Know this, Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of explanations is the moment you lose. Tell us why the murderer had to fire twice. Well, okay. He didn't know Larry was there. But he knew Lotta was there. So, if he fired twice and made it obvious that he missed, then he wanted a witness. I believe he shot twice to create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer hit, lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. Indeed, Miss Hart did exactly that after hearing the first gunshot. Next, the murderer waits a bit and he fires again. Then, yeets himself into the lake. The murderer jumps from the boat himself leaving the pistol in the boat behind him. I see. To someone looking from the edge of the lake, it would appear that one of the men on the boat has shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice, to draw attention to the boat. Hmm. Once you realize that, everything else falls into place. The boat shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. This is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events that transpired that night on Gord Lake. Hello, what did you miss? Hello, Sylvan. Um, well, we have already been, we've already been declared guilty and then we said, wait a minute. Um, and Larry, Larry stepped in and admitted he heard a gunshot. So now we're basically unraveling Von Karma's entire narrative. So not a lot, but not a little. Bailiff, bring out the witness from before. The boat shop caretaker, quickly. Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant, Miles Edgeworth, a few questions. Mr. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Oh yeah, we are absolutely driving Von Karma up the wall and I love it. Mr. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Yes, I have. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? What Wright has said is mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked him for me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he had something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry, I can't say what it was. Hmm. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Find him. Quickly. We cannot allow him to get away. What? Meow? Mr. Von Karma, your witness has disappeared. Hmm. A search warrant has already been issued. Hmm. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize all its forces to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that boat shop caretaker? I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him and I want to know who he is. Hmm... Very well. Court is adjourned. Woohoo! And we've just survived day two. Which can Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. And what about Larry? That was something else. 
Even Von Karma didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really helped us out. Sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he did save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's us on trial instead of our clients. Hey, Edgeworth? Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Huh? Did, did you say something? Don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try to smile just a little. Relax. Mm, I'm sorry, but I fear it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Right. There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. And I don't know whether or not to tell you. Edgeworth? No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you, to get it off my chest, but... Hmm, I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Edgeworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Edgeworth, I, you were being decidedly even more unhelpful than you were before I started this case. 